Y'all ready? Okay. Just two. Mm. I don't have to. I'll go here, Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> Call to order the meeting of the Compsy Board, Scammy County, January 10th, 2024. Uh, Madam Secretary, do we have a quorum this morning? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. With five members present, we do. Thank you. Do we have proof of publication of this meeting? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. It was published on January 4th, 2024 in the Escambia County Sun Press. Thank you. And do we have an approval? Do I have a motion for approval of the minutes from the December 6th? 2023 meeting they were not uh received in time to be on the agenda so they will be presented uh at our next meeting okay so we will suspend that to the next meeting okay our next section is a public forum session if anyone here today would like to speak to the board on anything, uh, any topic outside of what is on our agenda today. You are welcome to come to the podium and address the board. I believe all parties present are here for agenda items. Thank you. And uh, Madam Secretary, do you have us your status report this morning? Y yes, sir. I have a couple of items for y'all today. Um, Mr. Poole, as you recall, he came uh, to this board for a hearing um, and there was an executed final order uh, for the board. Um, Mr. Poole is requesting a payment plan on some of the remaining balance. Um, the final order clearly states that he has until a certain date to get that paid. Um, and he doesn't feel that he's going to make that date. However, Mr. Poole has made payments to um, the subcontractor that was left unpaid. He's also made a payment to Ms. Cheney. He's not really owing but like $2,000 to in restitution, but it's the payments to the county that he's asking a payment plan for. Um, if you'd like, I can bring up that pay schedule that he proposed. Could you please? Yes. He says he owes Ms. Cheney 83 Ms. Third, Chesney, yeah. Chesney, I'm sorry. Uh, 8331 is what he still owes her? But he has made payments in the amount of 4500 plus an additional 1500 so he's paid $6,000 in regard to that restitution amount already. As you recall, in that restitution amount that you uh, ordered, $4,500 of that was to a subcontractor uh, and that has he has made that payment. His schedule shows December, January through May payments that would equal the 8331, but you're telling us that he has already paid down on the 8331? Because the, the checks that... That is correct. He made the payment um, to the subcontractor directly to the subcontractor. Right, $4,500. That's one of your... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. 
and then he paid an additional amount to Miss Chesney. So on that restitution, he only owes $2,331. And then the county assessed him fines in the amount of $2,250. He would like some form of payment plan for that remainder. The check that's included in the packet here to Miss Chesney is for $1,500. That's correct. December 19th of 2023. That's correct. He just made that payment recently. Okay, so that's the only payment he's made against the 83? I, I, I guess I'm somewhat confused in that so letter that he sent. In Miss Chesney's restitution request, it included the $4,500 for the subcontractor. So you're she was that going out. to pay I've, him. That cleared it up. Mm -hmm. That cleared it up. So he's asking for a payment plan to the county for the twenty-two fifty, as well as the two thousand three hundred thirty-one dollars. <throat> what he doesn't want to see is, I believe, his final order said he had till the end of this month uh, to make these payments. He didn't want um, for any revocation of license, suspension of license. Uh, he wanted to be able to request he have more time to make those payments. And this payment schedule he's asking for is what we see right here, up until May the 1st to pay the final payment of twenty two fifty. dollars But that's, that's not accurate based on he's what already he's already paid done. 4500 That's what I was trying to Correct. decipher. Correct. So based he, on this now, he only owes three, roughly two he, something three to Miss Chesney and then the twenty two to the county. Total, he owes $4,581 out of his final order. That's how much he owes. Four thousand five hundred eighty-one dollars. That's including the. County. That's it. That's the remainder of the restitution and the fines assessed by okay. the county. Now he submitted this payment plan request before he made right. payments. Gotcha. I was the one that suggested to him that he start go ahead and making those payments to show that he was making an attempt, and he did. So does he still need till May to pay the balance off? That's, that's your discretion. Yeah, that's. <clears throat> we, I need the board to look at this and determine, uh, A, do we change it at all? If we do change it, then the 4581, uh, how long do we give him to pay the remaining of this? He's asking for May for the 10000 do we give him to May to do the 45? This I need a, some input from the board here. Yeah, I'd make a recommendation we go till March. Uh, he has shown good faith. He's paying it off, uh, pushing it off to May maybe. Uh, I mean, clearly he doesn't need till May based on the payments he's already made. And just to let the board know, we have been in communications with Ms. Chesney, and she is supportive of a payment plan. Oh, payment. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you for... <clears throat> Anybody else have any comments? I would say at least give him until March 31, not March 1st. Yeah, I would March give him 31. Until the end. Yeah. So I'll entertain a motion from someone to give Mr. Poole to March 31 to make the payments mm -hmm. in full of 4581. Yeah. So second. Yeah, sorry. I'll make the motion to go ahead and extend the payment plan till March 31st. So you his 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 date for his this all to be paid by will change from the 90 days you gave him to March, to March 31st. 31st 2024. Mm -hmm. And we have a second? Yes, second. I all second. in favor raise your right hand. All opposed same sign. Seeing none hearing none. Motion has been approved. Okay, our next item, which is not an agenda item, is um, we did receive an appeal on a <laughs> hearing that we had before this board. It was a Jonathan Harrington doing business as REO Construction and Repairs, LLC. Um, he sent his appeal to the county commissioners. Uh, we are in the process of scheduling that public hearing at this time. Uh, the BCC has to approve to schedule that public hearing, and then the following meeting, the public hearing 
would be held. It is tentatively set for February 8th. Um, we will need a representative from the board to attend this hearing. Normally it is the chairman or vice chairman. That's February 8th? That's February 8th, yes. It will be an evening meeting. So I'll be there to represent, to represent the board as the, the legal counsel. Um, there'll be somebody from staff and somebody from the board, from this board. I should be able to attend if not, I'm sure. One, yeah, of, one of us will figure it out. Okay. So yeah, I just need to know, what we can get it out to both of you. Yeah, um, because be we'll put together a packet before then that's going to go as the backup material to the board. Okay, send it to both of us and then I'll be there to make at this way. point and okay. something comes up. But thank you. Okay. And then our final item under board secretary status report is actually an item that came to um, me as a reciprocity. Um, we had an application for reciprocity. It was reviewed by staff and myself, and it was determined that uh, the applicant didn't meet the criteria for reciprocity. Um, he had his experience was under that of a fire license. We do not have jurisdiction over fire license, but that's how he obtained his experience uh, to install backflows. Um, he went to Okaloosa County and Okaloosa County issued him an underground utilities license with parameters on that, that he could only install backflows. Um, after doing some research in the state of Florida is usually a plumbing license that install backflows. Um, an underground utility license can install a backflow if it's part of the work that they are performing and it's on their own job. So it's not like they can go to someone else's job and install a back backflow. Um, there are a few licenses that allow irrigation, same thing. If you're installing an irrigation system, you can install the backflow. Um, there has been a request from this applicant that if we could find some way for him to be able to install backflows in Escambia County, this is the result of the state DBPR um, finding out that it was being done and saying, hey, you can't do this. So they're trying to get licensed to be able to install backflows and they wanted some insight from the board on how this could be done. And what license does he have now? So he currently does not have a license in Escambia County. He has in Okaloosa an underground utility license issued in Okaloosa with parameters right. that they allowed to where he can only install backflow. Uh, no, he's not present. Um, he wanted to reciprocate that underground utility to us. We don't do parameters on licenses. Uh, we, we haven't in the past. Uh, so that's what he is questioning. How, how can he do this? And maybe you had some advice for him. Can I, well, I'm gonna can I interject? Go ahead. go ahead. You go ahead. I think we're on the same page. It's not the it's not within the powers of this board to give advice on that type of matter. Correct. And I would add to that that I think that the licensing has already been set in our county. That's correct. Our so we don't even have to give advice. We can just say you have to have an irrigation license or a plumbing license, if I'm not correct. Those are the only two. So the plumbing license allows him to install backflows across the board. Right. Irrigation license only allows only him to do the sprinkler. for the irrigation right. purposes. But that's the only two license in Scambia County that allows to install a backflow from what my understanding, without going to your underground contractor for the big backflows. His, then his other question was, does the work under the fire license no. qualify him no, for those licenses? Not in Skimmy County, though, from my understanding. Now, again, he would have to go by what our county already has set up. We have no control over that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Anything else from the secretary? No, sir, that's all. Okay, we'll move into our contractor applications. Mr. John Bell, if you're present. Yes, sir. 
like to approach the podium, please. Uh, Mr. Bell, if you would please state your name and address uh, for the record. John W. Bell, 5800 Balderas Avenue, New Pensacola, 32507. Uh, board members, Mr. Bell is applying uh, for a building or to test application for examination for building contractor. Uh, as a review, staff's motion is to approve. Recommendation. I apologize. Yeah, anybody besides me have questions on this? Have anybody reviewed this? Um, looks like part of the application was not completed. Such as on the affidavit where you ever refused a local state certificate, certificate of competency, yes or no, nothing was checked. And are there any charges currently pending against you, which would be grounds for disciplining your license, yes or no? I, it looks like that might have been. Mr. Over. Bell, if you could go ahead and answer those questions today sure. before the board, we can make notations on your application. Okay. So were you ever refused a local state certificate of competency? No. And are there any charges currently pending against you, which would be grounds for disciplining any license you yeah. have? And the, do you guys have any questions? <laughs> I feel no, like I'm going to ask. <laughs> um, so again, on page seven, the form that's required if you have not lived or worked in Florida for the past 10 years is pretty much blank. There's no information there. And it appears the information to be completed by the owner um, on page six was just copied, you know, whoever filled out the, the first part, top part, done the second as well. Mr. Schellenberger, has anybody from staff talked to him? I spoke to Mr. Schellenberger's staff yesterday uh, to verify that accur the accuracy of the information that was provided. And the, it is accurate. Everything's yes, sir. Because the, all of the supporting documents shows license from Mr. Schellenberger and nothing from Mr. Bell. This was to verify uh, Mr. Bell's employment and experience under uh, Mr. Schellenberger uh, during his time in California. If you recall, uh, the board previously asked us to make sure that we were vetting these property properly, ensuring that whomever is signing these affidavits had accurate licensure as well. And that's what you're seeing. That backup documentation for Mr. Schellenberger is, is what him. the board requested of us. Now, that's page for out-of-state residency. He has actually lived here for 10 years. So that page maybe should have just been removed um, from the application. but. Okay. Mr. Bell, tell us about your experience in construction, et cetera. Sure. <clears throat> um, I grew up in a household with an architect for a father, and I began drafting uh, in my teens. I, high school was all drafting. College was architecture. I did not finish my college. I went right into kitchen cabinets, and I owned a kitchen cabinet company for 15 years, which was licensed in California. Fortunately for Florida, a C6 license in California doesn't qualify for the builders. I was also C5, which is framing, but it didn't transfer, just I had technicality. Uh, I sold my company in 2005, and we used to do about eight, eight houses a day. It was quite a large company. I have a lot of experience in construction. I've also built five homes on my own under my license in California. I own five lots here, and I'm intending to build those five homes for myself, for my family, and use them as rentals. Um, so I've, I've got a lot of experience in all trades. Um, and I've been in the contracting business. I personally have worked, my company's worked on several thousand homes. Just the way the licenses in Florida does not translate. I worked under Mr. Schnellenberger um, for about 13 years. Um, he's one, he was one of the people that I worked with that did thousands of homes also, but he was one of maybe 10 that were of that caliber. Um, he's still in business. He's changed his name three times, so there was a little confusion. When I worked with him, it was world development. Now he's under the name Snellenberger Builders. 
Um, he's still building four to eight million dollar homes. So I, I feel I have the experience that I would like. And I'm not a, I did an owner builder last year on my personal residence, uh, scratch built, but the um, Florida would prefer to, uh, me to have a license if I'm gonna be doing five homes, obviously. So I'd rather not waste my time trying to do one owner builder at a time. Anybody from the board have a recommendation? A motion to approve. Second. Right I second. Second. All in favor, any question? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none. Mr. Bell, you've been approved to take the test. Thank you, sir. And the famous words of the man who sat here before me, don't come back and see us. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate your time. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next one we have is Mr. Bradley Wood. Mr. Wood, if you would please state your name and address for the record. Good morning. Uh, Bradley Wood, 529 Retreat Lane, Gulf Shores, Alabama. Board members, Mr. Wood is uh, coming before you for application for examination to test for a doors, windows, and siding license. Uh, staff's recommendation is for approval. Anybody have any comments on the application before we... Mr. Wood, you wanna tell us about your experience yourself? Um, I've got a little over 14 years of window and door experience. Originally from Georgia, moved uh, to Gulf Shores five years ago and started working for a company out of Florida to get used to the impact product and just trying to get licensed and everything in this candy. So, no questions for the board. Do I have a motion for? I make a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? I'll second. All in favor, any questions? <laughs> All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none here, now Mr. Woods, you've been approved. Take the test for the thing. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Good luck with it. We move now into probable cause hearing. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Item 8-1 is Jonathan M. Rushing doing business as Elevate Roofing and Exteriors Incorporated State Certified License Number CCC 1331339 Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 230669COM It's in regard to Rosemary Aponte, homeowner complainant at 1425 Little Creek Drive, Pensacola, Florida 32506 As you can recall, this was this is a continued probable cause hearing um, from our last meeting. You can just give me a second, sir. <clears throat> Try to find my form. Sorry, I apologize. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Um, Ms. Aponte, are you present today? Uh, Ms. Reber has just informed me that Ms. Aponte was not going to be able to attend today. And Mr. Rushing, are you present today? Yes, I'm going to call in a second. Let me just speak into the microphone. Um, we're going to call in to Mr. Rushing. He was in South Florida, if I'm not mistaken. So That's correct. Yeah. Okay. We, if you can go ahead and do that and we can get him on the phone. Okay. And Madam Secretary, th there's actually two items here, so the board will know that we'll go right into the next one with hey, Mr. Jonathan, Rushing. Yes, so there are two facets of this case today, um, of this actual complaint. Uh, some of it involves the actual uh, roofing license, but then some of it involves his residential right. Just license. Just make sure the board's aware that we got Yes, sir. We'll go right into that. Mr. Rushing, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. At this time, I'm going to have Mr. Rushing sworn in as well as Ms. Reber, and Ms. Reber will remain sworn for the entirety of this hearing. Okay. 
raise your right hand if you sworn. You solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I swear. Mr. Rushing? Say, I swear. Thank you. Um, Ms. Reaver, was a formal complaint filed with the board and on what date was it filed? Uh, yes, it was June 12th of 2023. And were you able to communicate with the complainant, Ms. Aponte, about this case? Yes, I was. And were you able to communicate with Mr. Rushing about this case? Yes, I was. And did Ms. Aponte provide supporting documentation to this case and is it attached as the agenda? She did. I mean, it's to the agenda. Um, and did Mr. Rushing provide any supporting documentation? Is it, it, is it attached to the agenda? Yes, he did, and it's all attached. And Ms. Reber, were permits obtained? If so, when were they obtained, and what are their current status? Uh, yes, a permit for the roof was obtained on January 17th, 2023. Um, it had a final past inspection on January 27th, 2023. However, uh, the past inspection was rescinded by Tim Tolbert, the building official, based off of a closer inspection done on the property. So it sits in a unpassed currently. Staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. So moved. Same second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none here, none. Motion has been approved. And as you can recall, there were, uh, from the last hearing, uh, Ms. Reber cited that Code Section 1837C1 might be a possible violation for disregard or failure to correct building code violations or any municipal or county building codes, ordinances, or laws of the state of Florida. Uh, that was cited because it still has not received a passing inspection, and there were some corrections that needed to be made. Um, so that is the entirety of this case, is, is that it needs a past inspection. Um, Ms. Aponte, again, is not here. Uh, Mr. Rushing, if you would like to go ahead and address the board in regard to um, that inspection, please. So, um, of course, a lot of that inspection is tied in also with the... Um, <clears throat> The structural, the structural things that we had to fix from the wood rot, the extensive wood rot. As you might remember from last hearing, the pictures that we showed. So we had to go in and do some restructure of the, um, the soffit and the fascia area. It was determined upon that reinspection for the the roof that there was also uh, a need for an additional permit for uh under my general contractor's license for that framing stuff that we had to do there so we pulled that permit i think it just and miss reaver can speak to it the exact date but I, I think it was a little over a week ago that we finally were able to obtain that permit in our last meeting you know i i, I was guilty of overestimating what I could do uh, based on me not really considering the holidays and, um, you know, different ones being sick. But basically, you know, I committed at that point in the last hearing that we would pull the appropriate permit. We would come out, <clears throat> fix the soffit and fascia area, and then we would, you know, call for final inspection for both the framing uh, of that area and the roof all at the same time. And so, um, you know, it just, we've, we've hit some holiday stuff here. We have pulled the permit. I am in touch with the subcontractor, uh, that is supposed to go out there, uh, this week and, you know, get all this material list together. And our, our goal is to try to have this completed next week. Uh, we did call and leave message with Miss Aponte. We've not been able to talk to her, but we did leave her voicemail, uh, indicating such 
and uh, we are trying to resolve this as we kind of agreed to in our last hearing. It's just taking me a little longer than I had hoped. Does any board member have a comment? I go ahead. So currently, uh, no work has been done on it since we had the last board meeting. No, sir, because the first thing we had to do was pull the permit. Uh, my my admin uh, was out for over a week with some sickness and stuff. She came back and started getting everything together and you know submitted for permit and it was issued. Um, I, I can I, I can to... clarify that it was issued December twenty seventh. The permit was right. yes, and, and that was... was for the facial work on the other right. case. And still nothing has happened on the site. No, so after we pulled the permit, you know, we contacted the the sub and of course, you know, right there at the twenty seventh, I mean they weren't working. Uh we did talk to them this week and they said they were gonna get out there and get material lists and we uh try to get the work done next week to fix all of the the uh, framing and make sure it's up to code and right, and then we call for inspection for everything. So I guess my concern is, uh, has there been any additional damage happened at the property since we've had all this rain? And do we know? I mean, have we heard anything from the Apontes? I talked to Miss Aponte last week. Uh -huh. And uh, she had actually called me and, at, and explained to me she wasn't going to be able to make the hearing because she doesn't drive. Um, she just indicated at that time she'd not heard anything from Mr. Rushing. I told her that they did obtain the permit. And um, my last communication with him was that, just like this, they were trying to get the subs together and get the work coordinated. But I haven't heard from her since we had that so, um, uh, that weather earlier in the week. So what I'd there's, like, go ahead. There's, it's, you know, it's to my understanding, we haven't received any calls from her that there's any kind of, I mean, everything that we did was covered by the roof. It was just, you know, determined that some of the framing that we did for that soffit was uh, not up to code and we were gonna have to redo some of that. Uh, to bring it to a, a code standard. And so there, there shouldn't be anything that is open to quote unquote weather, except just the exposed wood underneath the roof there. Uh, but all that's going to be replaced anyway. So I can make a recommendation uh, that uh, staff make sure that there's no other additional damage that they're claiming that's happened. And if Mr. Rushing's willing to make sure that he makes it whole to allow till our next meeting, but the next meeting there won't be any additional extensions. He will go straight to disciplinary. So, uh, anybody from the board got any other comments? So I'll make a motion to go ahead and allow a 30-day or till our next board meeting extension for the job to be completed, and to report back and make sure all the permits are closed. I'll have a second. That. I'll second that. I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, do we want to or move it to disciplinary, and then if it doesn't happen, we're already at disciplinary? I, I appreciate that, Mr. Bell. I was going to make the statement, uh, Mr. Russian. You can hear us still, correct? Yes. We take this very seriously, and the fact that there's been a month and zero happened. Uh, and then along with that permit was pulled a couple weeks ago now and I understand the holidays I'm a builder we got people up here all in construction and, and different things but some things go to the very front of the line and I'm not sure this has got there yet for you guys but I think it's important for you to notice and hear that for us this must be a priority I know. Sure. And, I, and, I, and I assure you it will be. I, it's not that, uh, you know, I feel like if it would have been any other time besides the holiday times and some of the 
sicknesses that were occurred that would it would have been done but i can assure you it'll be done uh promptly and and uh we indicated that to miss aponte when we talked to her or when i left the message that we were we were looking to have this done next week so i'm sorry i'm not trying to delay it and it is important to us i want to get this fixed we all have things happen but at the same time at some point I know we just have to move things to the front. So with that being said. With that, um, that being said, I'm going to withdraw my motion. Okay. Um, yeah, withdraw the second. I'll withdraw the second. Withdraw the second. Do I have another motion to go ahead and move it to disciplinary action with the opportunity for Mr. Rushing to complete this between now and the next meeting of which could be removed? I'll Let make me, that motion. Before you make that motion. It's uh, I'm a, when we were speaking earlier about the next date, it takes longer than that because of the notice provisions and the paperwork that has to be done. So the next disciplinary would be a two month it would be March, date. That would be March 6th. So what happened if we moved it? Everything else we move in January goes to February. When it's a probable cause hearing, if you continue it, it goes we're not the, going to continue it we're going to move it straight to disciplinary right whenever it's a disciplinary action it takes a little while to draft that administrative complaint uh, get it through legal process and then send that out we have notice requirements you have to have them noticed at minimum 10 days prior to the hearing so for us to be able to meet those requirements we give a two-month window uh, it's not like we're continuing a meeting where you're actually choosing to send us to disciplinary hearing which is a two-month window well, i thought in the past it's always went from probable cause to the next month disciplinary. It, it can if there's only like one case that goes but we have other cases that are on our agenda i don't want to preemptively say that yes we will get that done in that window well we'll still continue on with the disciplinary and we're going to allow him 30 days and then go back next month to this day. We're not killing mm -hmm. an additional 30 days. And if so, he comes back next month and it's done, then it, then it could be removed from the agenda. Correct. If once once you cue something for up for disciplinary, you right. don't just remove it from an agenda. The hearing has to occur. Right. Mm -hmm. But then when it's here, when we go to disciplinary, if it's already been resolved, it can just be. Then the board can make the decision based on the right. facts at that time. So what you, one of those options that you could do is allow, go ahead and set it to the, the March meeting for the disciplinary proceeding if the board finds that there should be um, probable cause and then it should go to disciplinary proceeding. We're back. And then you can allow him to come back in next month. You could say, if you get this done or fixed, it's okay if you come back in and let us know that ahead of time. It, you know, with, because you're not doing a hearing in February, but that would, because uh, really what you need here is compliance. Uh, so if that's your, your goal, you could have him, you can put him on the next agenda and he can, he can call and let us know that he's gotten it done, but leave him on your March agenda for your disciplinary hearing. And then Understood. that gives him 30 days to, to get back to you and shows that show that he's done something on it. Doesn't mean that you won't still take disciplinary action, but it certainly gives something for you to consider, um, should you take disciplinary action, something to consider in the weight of the the uh, sentencing or the uh, fines and costs and things like that. So let me try this again. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and move the case to disciplinary action and uh, we'll allow Mr. Rushton to come in on the February 8th meeting, I believe it is, 7th meeting, uh, to provide an update. And if he is completed and uh, everything's the way it needs to be, uh, then the board will determine at that time whether or not to continue moving forward with the disciplinary meeting for March meeting. Do we need You can do that as long as you do not have a disciplinary meeting in February. Understood. Okay. Yeah. So that was my motion. Second. And I have a second. Do I have any more questions at this point? All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none. Motion has been approved for both complaints, case number 23111169COM and com case number 230669COM. Motion was for both cases. 
That was my that was my question, sir. And March sixth sixth will be the disciplinary hearing for this case for, for both, both cases. Both cases. Did you have a motion on the probable cause? That was it. Oh, okay. We're going to disciplinary So you're finding hearing. there's probable cause? Yes. Okay. We're going to disciplinary hearing for both cases okay. on March 6th. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Russian. Um, you may have cut off. So I'll, I'll talk to you after the hearing. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Since the board determined to move both items one and two to disciplinary hearing on March 6th, we are going to move on to item three. Uh, Sean C. Carpentier uh, doing business as first on site property restoration, state certified license number uh, CGC 1525001, contractor competency board complaint number 230998. COM. It's in regard to Maurice Dixon, homeowner complainant at 8150 Pine Forest Road, McDavid, Florida, 32568. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Uh, Mr. Dixon, are you present today? And are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And Mr. Carpenter, I see that you're present today. And are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to have both parties sworn in. And just a reminder that Ms. Reaver was previously sworn. Mr. Reaver, I can't be sworn. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. As you can recall, this, com this hearing was also continued from our previous hearing. I don't believe that there were any additional items provided after that initial probable cause hearing, Melissa? No, there was not. All right, so all of those are already in to um, evidence. Um, if I'll bring up the investigation report and do just a, a quick reminder on uh, the code sections. Um, that were deemed to be a possibility. Um, code section 1837 D9B, uh, contracting beyond the scope of practice allowed by license, uh, no safety hazard. Uh, code section 1837 D9H, failure to supervise construction activities. And code section 1837 D15C, proceeding on any job without obtaining applicable local building department permits and or inspections. Um, it's at the board's discretion on how they want to head and uh, if they want updates from both parties on this one. Um, I'm going to leave it to you, Chair. <laughs> from what I understand of the report, the last meeting, there was some permits that was going to be issued for the plumbing and that has not taken place. Is that what I'm reading? Mr. Carpenter, if you can come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Sean Carpenter, 4441 Soundside Drive, Gulf Reefs, Florida, 32563. It has been The permit has been applied for, unbeknownst to me, anytime plumber has an inactive license currently. So they're tr getting that rectified so that the permit can be pulled and then inspected. And Chairman, I can elaborate on the license their uh, workers' comp in general liability was expired. Gotcha. And so I confirmed with licensing this morning they have received the um, general liability and are waiting on the workers' comp. So they, they applied for the permit on January 2nd. It was sent back to them January 4th as denied needing those documents. And we are proceeding with just replacing the shower, the drywall, all of that once we get the actual material in for the sides to, you know, just have any time plumber go ahead and redo all of it. So you're redoing the whole shower? Yes, sir. Everything will be yes, sir. new and good to go? Yep. It, it, and I'm sorry, just remind me, who, who, which plumber are we using? Anytime plumber. And that's the... Your plumber or his plumber? The plumber That's that, the yeah. our plumber. Your plumber. Yes, okay. ma'am. Anybody have any questions, Mr. Carpenter? Mr. Dixon, would you like to speak to the board about this, or are you okay with everything? And uh, I'm, so, I'm good with everything so 
Mr. Dixon, if you could come to the podium and state your name and address, please. Thank you. Maurice Dixon, uh, 8155 Forest Road, McDavid, Florida, 32568. Um, yes, um, I've been in contact with, uh, I guess, Alex, another one of their, I guess, um, that works for them. Um, and, yeah, they are replacing everything. Um, it, it needed to be replaced anyway. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's a slow process right now. They got the order. I think the skins already got the skins. I don't know. Um, so we'll just go from there, see how it turn out. It's like they're making you whole, which is what you want to be at. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Making way. That's what we want to hear up here. <laughs> yeah. Anybody have any questions, Mr. Dixon? What are we looking at time-wise? Do you know that it'll take you to get this completed, uh, Mr. Carpenter? They were, yesterday when I checked on it, we were trying to get the exact SKU number to make sure we got the same material. We didn't have that yet, so I don't have a delivery time frame yet. Okay. We waited till after the New Year's to really get started. Any time went out prior to that, made sure that there was no leaks. There was nothing that was getting worse. So that was handled, I think, the week after the original meeting. Nice. But then it was still, you know, we held off until after the holidays to do any of the actual work. Um, so that's why it's only been a couple days. The uh, permit was applied for on the second because of that item. We don't have the time frame for the delivery for the skins, but it shouldn't be long because they're pretty, I mean, it's just fiberglass sheeting. So I would say a week or two we should be able to have it done. At least the majority of it. We still may have painting and stuff like that because we'll have to do repainting after we replace the drywall. So can we, uh, any other comments from the board? I'd like to thank you for stepping up. We we see the other side up here a lot. <laughs> so it's good to see somebody do what's right. That was our desire from the beginning. And, and I appreciate that. Just, just wanted to make a note of that. Me and Mr. Dixon of getting approval to, to move forward. Yep. So being able to meet here and actually talk afterwards, we got approval to move forward. Good. So that way we could take care of it. That's, that's what we want. So uh, Do I have a motion from somebody uh, to either yeah take a give a motion to move it to our next uh, board meeting. But if between now and then uh, they uh, satisfy staff that the work's been completed, and then uh, uh, we can remove it on the agenda item by just letting it. So what you would do is make a motion to continue to the next board continue. meeting, okay. um, and then they can provide staff with an update, and then we can present that to the board at the next meeting. Uh, and then you can choose how you would wish to proceed at that meeting. I have a motion for the continuance of case number 230998COM. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, Mr. Bell, second. Any questions? And just as informative, that would be the February 7th meeting. Correct. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none here, none. Motion's been approved. Hopefully, you guys won't have to come back. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you all, both of you. If, if I may interject here, um, I apologize, but when we did the probable cause hearings on Jonathan Rushing, we only introduced evidence on the first case. We did not take evidence into the second case, and we didn't have a basis for the probable cause. Um, so, I thought he mentioned it while he was on the call that it one's pending on the other. Was he that, he did mention it, but yeah. we didn't do our process. Okay. We still have to read it into the record. We still have to um, present the uh, alleged violations to you so that you can take it to disciplinary, including those alleged violations. We, and so we would, just need to circle back and do that. So I we're going to try to get him on the phone so that okay. we can do that with him present, if that's okay. okay with. Yeah. Okay. You want to take five minutes to get that done and get him back on now so we can just move into what remains? What order would you like to do that in? Would you like to take it now or would you like to progress to the next hearing? Uh, uh, I have him on the phone. I was just going to go ahead and... Mr. Rushing. They've got him on the phone. Um, okay. We have procedurally... So on some things we did case correct. number... Complaint number 231116COM. So, one, one, so, one, 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 so, so to let everybody know what's going on, because <laughs> I just, you know, there are viewers at home that may not understand. There were two cases that were against Mr. Rushing, and we read into the record the first case. Uh, we also included what 
uh, with the alleged violations were. And when the motion was made for that first case, it included that second case. However, we did not procedurally read that into the record along with the alleged violations. So we're going to circle back now, even though the motion's been made, and, and do that so that we procedurally have this right. So that second case involving Jonathan M. Rushing, DBA, Elevate Roofing and Exteriors, Inc., State Certified License Number CRC 133-2396, Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 2311116 COM. Again, it's regarding Rosemary Aponte, the homeowner complainant at 1425 Little Creek Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32506. Mr. Rushing is on the phone uh, with us, correct, Mr. Rushing? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Um, do you understand that we're just circling back to get all of this on the re record? Yes, I understand. Okay. In that investigative report um, from Ms. Reber for this second case, she cited Code Section 1837-D15C proceeding on any job without obtaining applicable local building department permits and or inspections. If you recall, this had to do with the fact that there was some structural issues from some framing supporting this roof that were repaired and replaced um, without the proper permitting. Um, the motion that was previously made that involved both hearings include, uh, took it to disciplinary. Uh, we just need a new motion the evidence. that says, hey, yes, we're taking this to disciplinary hearing for this item. Do I have a motion to accept the documentation into record for this? That's correct, sir. Uh, there was no new documentation from the previous hearing. Um, um, Jen, the, the besides new, the permit, so correct. we are going to add the, that that's, new that's permitting documentation. Uh, staff will request that we have a motion on that. So moved. And second. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, right hand. Seeing none, hearing none. Motion has been approved to move the documentation into evidence. So before we move forward, I just want to make sure it's clear on the record because this one got a little sideways. Sideways. Um, so the evidence that was in for the first charge, the first case we handled, that is being added to the evidence for this case. Mm -hmm. and, and the evidence for this case is the new permit information. Mm -hmm. So that's what you just did. Correct. I just want to make sure that it's accepted it's for government. both. Right. Accept it for both. And, That's all. Thank you. And Mr. Rushing, I know that he addressed this in the other case hearing, but Mr. Rushing, do you have anything to add in regard to obtaining that permit and, and for this hearing? No, I think it's all good. Okay. Okay. So for this hearing, there's just the one code section violation. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. 1837? Yes. Okay. And so earlier, what you were trying to do is find probable cause for both. So and we, we found probable cause for both items because they were interwoven together. Okay. So we did find probable cause for both of them. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And that's the, we just needed to make sure we, I would just go ahead and do them separately just so that we have it very clear on the record. Okay. It, okay. It was muddled for me and I think it was. So it I was, will entertain a motion to move. Complaint number 230669COM, which was the first complaint into disciplinary hearing for With, March. Um, just a quick suggestion on the motion, do we need to include the recommended code violation for disciplinary hearing in the motion? Mm -hmm. I think there's just one on each. So yeah. we usually consider them individually when there's more than one per that's up to you. You can certainly. Okay. No, I just didn't know if yeah. we needed to have that as part of the motion that this is what we're. We can include it, Mr. Bell, just to make sure we cover our bases. How's <laughs> that? So I will entertain a motion on case number 230669COM in regards to code section 18 37C1 to be moved to disciplinary hearing on March 6th. So moved. And do I have a second? Second. Any questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. 
All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hear none. Motion has been approved. We will also accept a motion to for case number 2311169COM in regards to a complaint on code section 18-37D15C to be moved to disciplinary hearing on March 6th. So moved. Second. Uh, motion and a second. Any questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hear none. Motion has been approved. Thank you, legal, for getting us straight here. And thank you for everyone's patience while we were trying to make sure we had this all procedurally correct. In all fairness, <laughs> I was trying to help out the guys that just sitting out here listening to this and expedite. And my apologies to y'all for making it worse. <laughs> we tried. We tried, that's right. <laughs> And thank you for keeping us straight, Madam Secretary. Okay, next case, Mr. Okay, this next item has to do with James B. Freeman doing business as Freeman Roofing, State Registered License Number RC 0058058, Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 231213COM. It's in regard to Nick and Chloe Sexton, the homeowner, the complainants at 101 South F Street, Pensacola, Florida. 32502. This is, location is within Pensacola city limits. Um, as you can recall, we have had a separate probable cause and disciplinary hearing for uh, items related to this case. The board directed us to take a further look into this case because you felt that there were some items that um, should have, could have been uh, some alleged violations as well. So this is the result of direction from the board to take a further look into this case, okay? Um, proper notice was sent to the respondent, uh, the complainant. I see that uh, Nick and Chloe Sexton are both present. And I see that you have a, a gentleman with you. Um, are, sir, what is your name? Uh, William Radcliffe. I'm with Arcadia. And Mr. Radcliffe, are all three of you going to be providing testimony for this hearing today? Yes, ma'am. Yes. I will. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, and Mr. Freeman, are you present today? No, he's not. He's under the weather. Thank you. And are you going to be providing testimony? Thank you. At this time, I'm going to have all parties that are going to be providing testimony for this hearing be sworn. And just a reminder that Ms. Reber was previously sworn. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do swear. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with this board? Um, if so, what date was it filed? Now, keep in mind, this was, came from a direction from the board. So, um, I don't know if you want to speak further to that. Um, the complaint originally came in on June 26, 2023. And I opened a new complaint, as the secretary said, based on board direction. <laughs> And were you able to communicate with both parties about this case? And were, was anything additional provided? There was nothing additional provided. Okay. And um, so I see that there's an inspection history um, uploaded to this case. Um, that's a, additional investigation items that you obtained, correct? Yes. There were some items from the original case that I just moved over into this case that appeared applicable. Thank you. Um, we know that there was permitting that was obtained with the city. What is the current status of that permitting with the city? Um, that permit remains in a failed status. It was um, had originally passed in June 2023, but the building official for the city rescinded that past inspection uh, in September of 2023. And again, it just remains in a failed status. Uh, staff would request that the documentation attached the agenda as backup to this case uh, be moved into evidence. So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. 
All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none, motion to move attachments and evidence is approved. Ms. Reber, after further investigation and research into this case at the board's direction, were you able to assign any uh, additional alleged violations to this case? If so, uh, please see, state each violation and your justification. Code section 1837C1, um, this has to do with just failing to uh, bring that original permit to a past status. Code section 1837D4, um, again, the, the uh, everything has not been repaired. Also, um, there was some direction given on a contractor assist meeting to provide engineering um, and also the fact that, uh, uh, by, I'm sorry, provide a structural engineer report and also um, they were advised that the roof was not installed by manufacturer's installation instructions. And code section 1837D13C3, um, originally it was failing to supervise this, however, it still continued on. Um, they still have not presented any documentation and there's been minimal work done. It's the information I got from the Sextons since the last hearing. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sexton, uh, if you can, along with the uh, gentleman from Arcadia, this is your opportunity to address the board in regard to the complaint. Uh, just please state your name and address for your the record. It's Nicholas Sexton, 101 South F Street, Pensacola, Florida, 32502. Um, we're just here again. Uh, once again, we paid $89,000 to Freeman. We haven't seen any new work done or new engineering plans. We're really just trying to get our roof fixed. I mean, it's going on six months. We don't want insurance to come by and say, you know, this roof's not up to code. We can't insure this building anymore. We're just trying to get our roof done like as soon as possible and just get a correct roof that passes code. And if you'd like to say anything, please. Hey, I'm William uh, Edward Radcliffe. I live at 2852 Angus Circle, Molino, Florida. 32577. I work for Arcadia. I'm one of the uh, engineers that's assigned to them. Um, we've reached out to uh, different contractors to get some bids uh, to move forward on getting this uh, roof fixed and replaced. So I have a question for you, Mr. Radcliffe. Yes, the Sextons uh, hired you to, to take a look at the roof. Yes, ma'am. Can you explain some of your findings? Uh, yes, I was the one that originally went out there and did the inspection. Uh, they, they didn't install the roof as part of the manufacturer guidelines, uh, multiple fasteners throughout the whole entire roof. Um, they uh, have constant leaks to this day. Uh, um, that's still ongoing, which is causing internal, internal damage into the raft area. Um, they went back to try to fix things and they ended up uh, scraping off the uh, coating, the gel coating on the, uh, the metal, which is causing corrosion, uh, which will uh, uh, eventually deteriorate beyond use. Um, and those multiple other uh, discrepancies that were noted during that inspection. Only, the only way we uh, came to the conclusion to fix this is to actually to replace the whole entire roof. Did you guys talk to the manufacturer of the roof material? We, we did. We reached out to them. Uh, the uh, couple of questions they asked us was, uh, were they fastened to uh, uh, metal purlins and everything on that building is old, it's wood, wood. Uh, which uh, it had to be engineered uh, from another structural engineer to design to see if it had the capabilities of withstanding uplift winds, loads. Um, they also agree there's way too many fasteners uh, through the whole entire roof. They did not go out there and actually walk the roof, so uh, some of the discrepancies they couldn't really clarify saying that was correct or not. Okay, anything else you'd like to tell us at this point? I got a question. Was there a structural engineer report? That was kind of a comment that was made. Was there any additional? Um, there, there wasn't in the beginning, but when uh, the building official from the city had the contractor assist on site in September, he instructed 
uh, Freeman to get a structural engineer to discuss the roof over. Now the report that came to us from Arcadia, was that actually a structural engineer report, the one that was submitted before? Uh, no, so we actually have a, a PE on staff that signed and sealed uh, the report because um, he agreed with uh, my findings and uh, uh, the report. Um, the structural engineering will be actually calculating the wind loads, uh, the uplift and all that. Um, that we did not do, and if we're going to uh, proceed to get a pole roof replaced, we will actually hire that out as a third party uh, to reevaluate that roof for the up wind loads and stuff. So there's no determination at this point if what's there is structurally sound or not visually, but there's, we correct. haven't seen a structural report. Gotcha. Does that make sense? And I'm sorry, Mr. Sexton. Um, my question is: yes. you originally paid the Freeman Freeman roofing how much? Eighty-nine thousand. Uh, we're well over that now with Arcadia and our lawyer, um, just trying to help us figure out what to do right. Um, I mean, I was compl again. I was all right with doing the roof over roof. I just wanted it to be done correctly. It was done in three days. Obviously, I mean, there's people doing shingle roofs that do it longer than three days. So our ten thousand square foot roof was done in three days, and the supervision was not done correctly. It's this. There's so many issues. Like I said before, the foam was cut into small pieces and shoved into the holes. There's so much seeping um, going back up into our building where there's no foam in between the flat areas and I have that on video it's just we're just trying to get the roof taken care of it's I mean we're $89,000 out and Mr. Freeman will not do anything he they won't refund us half of our money they won't present engineering plans like they've been t told to for months just go get an engineer to sign off I said if the engineer signed off on our building as is we would move on with our lives but he has not presented any kind of engineering to say this is all right. So we've had to move forward with Arcadia because this is my life. You know, I have a million dollar building and a roof that's bad on top. And we just want to be able to make sure that it's sealed and then I can get insurance, pass code, and just move on like everybody wants to. I wish I could do the handshake and be like, we're going to settle this and not see y'all next meeting. But Mr. Freeman will not do that. And, and one more question. So you do or do not have insurance at the moment? We do have insurance. Yes, I have insurance right now. On we the just build, don't. On yes, the building. yes, ma'am. I just think if the insurance adjuster comes out and looks at the building and finds out that we don't have right. a past permit, it's just going to open up a can of worms for us. So, was this roof under a, a claim status? Would that you? No, 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 we are not doing anything okay. besides what we're doing now okay. with the roof. No, okay. no claim status on the insurance. We just wish Mr. Freeman would make moves. I mean, sure. we wouldn't be here again if he hadn't made a move, and then we've gone another month. Um, professional roofing did come out, and I said, can y'all look at the boots? Because they redid the boots. That's the one thing that they redid. He said they weren't done correctly. So they still have done the boots the second time, but they are not done to code. So, so Mr. Sexton, I just have a question, because I work with licensing, and uh, that's part of my role for the county. Um, have you made any complaint on his liability insurance? No, uh, according to the lawyer, um, claim. In, yeah, the, the insurance can only be, the Freeman's insurance can only be used if we've uh, received excessive damage to the building, not on um, the install itself. That's, okay. that's what I've heard is that we can't claim insurance on Mr. Freeman because of their install. It would have to be like, um, is there damage inside of our building, which we haven't opened it up. Um, one thing on Mr. Freeman's, I mean, I, I sent in a video from Mr. Freeman before we started this job that said he's the best in town, he's going to do the roof right the first time, and that, that's what I went with. We thought we were getting a 15-year warranty and a 20-year roof. We didn't get either one of those now. So I, I don't know what do we, we do next. You know, We're just trying to get the roof done correctly. Do you have any input into the insurance part of what? It, it's true. I mean, it would have to have caused further damage. Yeah, in the building. In, on the building. And itself. once they take the roof right. off, the spray foam, because we have eight inches, there's a video on Mr. Freeman's that shows bad install of the roof. There's an actual video on his page, and a guy reaches down, grabs some of the spray foam, and squeezes it out, and water goes everywhere. So if that's the case, and we have that many leaks in our building, our spray foam could possibly be the same way, and full of water, which leads to mold, and everything. We're just, we got to get the roof done immediately. Right. Any other information from you guys? Okay. So, uh, 
Representative for Mr. Representative Freeman. From Freeman Rufin, mm -hmm. would you like to Thank approach you. the podium? Thank you. If you could just state your name and address for the record, please. Yes, uh, Rafiq Hamad, uh, 4201 Auckland Road, Pace, Florida, 32571. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, board, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <clears throat> no matter how many times you practice this, you get up here and you're just nervous. Yes, um, anyways, um, a few things since um, our last meeting here uh, on the probable cause, and then the, uh, you guys found us in... Um, in violation of uh, poor supervision. Uh, I reached out to multiple engineering firms to try to get somebody out to um, fulfill the need by the city of Pensacola. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've called and I got somebody on board. I've sent them all the information, the footage of this board meeting, uh, uh, information from my Acadia report, goes two, three days later, and the comms like, no, nah, sorry, we can't help you. Um, I finally was able to get in touch with the gentleman. Uh, I told him, I promised him I wasn't gonna mention his name in the meeting. Um, he said, listen, Acadia uh, people that hired multiple engineers in town and everybody you're gonna talk to, you're gonna run into the same problem because it's either a conflict of interest or prior employees that don't feel comfortable dealing with, with this. Your best bet is to try to reach out of state somebody so I went ahead and made a phone call to MBCI and I called our rep, our sales rep uh, with the, uh, the sales rep that sold us the product itself. And um, they reached out to me a couple of days later, said, okay, here's what you can do. Uh, you can reach out to a company based out of Montgomery. And actually when I sent a request for an extension, I put their name in here. Uh, one second, let me, let me get it up here. And it's uh, Roofing Asset Management Incorporation, and they're uh, based out of Montgomery. They do have a professional structural engineer and an installer. That's what they do. They do MBCI stuff all day long. Um, I had a conversation with them, and they said uh, our biggest problem is um, location, where you're located. It's going to take some time. Uh, holiday, everybody's sick. People got COVID, got flu, whatever, whatever. It, these are excuses, but that's the truth. Um, they said our lead time is about five to six weeks before we even send somebody out. Okay, I'll put you on a schedule for now, tentatively, and that was on the third. Uh, he said the earliest we can do is, is about five to six weeks from now. I'll put you down uh, tentatively for three to three and a half weeks from now, but it could move up, but I will keep you posted. That was the last conversation I had with them. Um, Regarding all the, all the things the Sextons has mentioned, uh, I, I want to reference something that took place in our meeting uh, back in November. Uh, Mr. Patel had mentioned um, that you know this this is going to be a continuous issue above and beyond. It's like no matter what we do, somebody's not going to be happy. Um, uh, I know the Sextons are never going to be happy until they get a brand new roof. Um, and based on our findings and all the information we got, there are areas in the roof that needs to be fixed, and we are willing to come out and fix it. You know, for them to send a third-party roofer and tell them that these pipe boots are, you know, are installed inaccurately or improper installation, that's, you know, as he said, she said. You know, I, I don't have a report. We do everything by code. We, we obey the law and the rules that you guys put in place um, and otherwise we'll be here every week you know with multiple complaints about our company and what we do um, the other thing is um, when they say they had multiple leaks we have addressed some of the leaks that they've had um, we have not had a single phone call to our office to my cell phone to Jimmy to I can't speak for Jimmy because I don't look at his phone and to Melissa's phone, none of us got a text message. Hey, we have a problem. We got a leak. If if that's a if that's a problem, I will have somebody there within a couple of hours, and we will stop that leak and we will track it down till we find it. Okay. So never, I, I I can bring my phone records for the last six months, and I'll show you how many calls I've had from the sextons, how many text messages I've had from them. But lately, in the last 
60, 90 days, nothing. I didn't get a call, complain, or saying, hey, we got a leak, come fix it. Um, the third thing is, um, like I said earlier, I want to reference something that was brought up in the meeting, uh, and it was I just happened to look at the YouTube video and review it over and over and over. It drove me insane last time when I was here when you guys said, you guys should have been there. You should have fixed this. I watched it over and over, and at minute 34, 53 seconds, Nick Sexton stood right here and said, his attorney, uh, Treadwick, I guess the, 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 the gentleman they hired, said no work to be done until an engineer or this situation be rectified. And that's why I didn't send anybody because we're still scrambling trying to get an engineer involved. And as I mentioned, every time we send somebody, they send something to somebody, they're like, oh, well, we can't help you. We can't help you. We can't help you. So you can only call so many local engineers in town, and then you run out of people. So that's, that's, that was our biggest problem. And it looks like we're heading in the right direction. Um, in the meantime, we came up with a, with a game plan. Um, if we get the okay from the engineer to proceed and fix the issues, you know, that will contradict, obviously, the Acadia report. And we're planning on getting a, a structural engineer involved not just a report. Um, if they contradict what they're saying, we have an action plan in place. We have material sitting at our office, ready to go. We have ideas that we are gonna run by the structural engineer and see if this, these things will rectify the situation and fix it once and for all. Um, and that's pretty much all I got. It, before you move on, I have a question for staff because at this point I'm confused. When was the first time Freeman was request, required or requested to have a structural engineer? How, when does that go back to? Okay. How, how long ago? So that was in August of 2022. That's yeah, that was the, September. the meeting with the city. September. It was September. September of... It says 2022 on here, but I think it was 2023, and that was by um, the city building so official city. and mm -hmm. the on-site contractor assist meeting. So since September of 2023 until today, yes. it's taken you this long to figure out a structural engineer? Um, uh, if I say yes, I would be lying. Um, there are other things that took place since that meeting. Mr. Freeman had went and met with the inspector and they told him what needs to be done. Um, uh, engineering was still a request. I reached out to MBCI and I reached out to the selling uh, uh, of the product to see if they have any recommendation. And right before our, um, our meeting in, in November, um, they finally reached out to me and says, here's a point of contact. You can contact this person and he'll walk you through who to use, what to do, and how to do it. Because I wanted to get with them on the uh, engineering side of it. Also, the screws, the amount of screws was installed on the roof. All of that stuff was in the assist meeting with the city that they requested all that information. And... Um, on our November hearing, when I was here, uh, I did mention I finally got in touch with somebody. And, and the next day they called me after the meeting and they said, because of our relationship with the manufacturer, we're not, we're not direct, we're not buying things directly from the manufacturer. I have to refer everything back to this selling company. So I forwarded everything to our sales rep and I said, please forward that stuff to MBCI and I need some kind of um, answer. So when I go in front of the board, I have an answer. Um, and they basically just throw their hands up and finally said, okay, here's a person in Montgomery you can reach out to. So it's, it, is, it is a lengthy process and I spend countless hours both at work, off work, emails, text messages, phone calls, 
I've, I've spent a lot of hours, I mean, um, and a lot of money to try to get this resolved. It's not because I'm just we're just not really concerned or we don't want to fix the problem. Believe me, if it was up to me, we'll be done today. We won't have this meeting. These, these people will be happy. They'll move on with their life. We'll wave at them when we see them somewhere and everybody will be happy, but that's, that's not the case. I promise you, it's not the lack of trying. We have tried and tried and tried and it's the communication between us and the manufacturer and they get bounced to another, to the third party and the third party is taking forever to answer. And when you call, somebody's on vacation, they're like, well, can you get me somebody else? Sure, I'll have somebody call you. You wait a day, two days, I'm like, okay, what's going on? Call back again. Oh, sorry, we didn't call you back, but we'll have somebody call you. So these are the issues that we're constantly running into, you know. And the same thing happened during uh, the order. When we ordered the material from, from the uh, supplier, the same thing exactly happened. And Mr. Sexton will, will agree to that. that. How many times have I given him, oh, it's coming, the material is coming. Then they're like, nope, it's not coming. Then, no, they have to do a special order this. So it's been that from day one with the supplier as well. And Sounds I, like I may you add need a new one supplier. More thing. Well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I do want to add one more thing. In, in the midst of all this, since our meeting, we received, at least that I know of, one letter. It looks like it was written by you know, a seven-year-old. Uh, threatening us, you know, stop being at the board meeting, stop this, and I, I wish I would have, I didn't think about it until we came up here, and, you know, I'm tired of seeing these contractors, da 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 and then just using profanity, and it looks like a seven-year-old wrote it, honestly. I would bring it, I'll send it to you guys, a copy of it. That was just no, no, no return address, no nothing, it was stuck in our mailbox. So I'm like, and who's, who's doing this? Who's, you know, it's kind of kind of threatening when somebody opens your mailbox and just throw a letter in there. So I will I will provide you guys a copy of it, I promise. So Yeah, I don't get the impression that the sections are that kind of caliber of people. No, no, so, no, I'm not. And I'm I know not, you're not accusing. I'm, not I'm just implying that. obviously, <laughs> you know, uh, somebody's bored. Yeah. On a Friday night watching YouTube and yeah. runs across all of and, this. So. And none of us up here have that time yep. to waste. <laughs> So I know you guys are busy. So. Plus, we don't know how to misspell. So, just kidding. Do I, I have any? I'd like to make. Board? A, I'd like to make a motion to move this to disciplinary hearing based on the alleged violations. Can you repeat that? I'd like to, make, to move it to disciplinary hearing. I second that. And that would be the March sixth hearing. Uh, may I ask the board something? If we're able to resolve. All these issues can we do what y'all are doing for the other contractor but that would be the in? best day in the world for everybody in this room yes. okay. it's automatic that would be absolutely just to be I clear we'd that all agree if we could get it resolved before then that won't remove the power of the board to still go forward on a disciplinary actions right but they can certainly use that in weighing the determinations if it's resolved that would and that's 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 my goal today that was my goal on on January 3rd when I send a letter to yourself I mean and we appreciate you coming and, and representing yep. today too, Mr. Feek. You, yes, have, you have been a voice of reasoning, so I appreciate you yes, sir. doing that. And I do I want to apologize for the last episode. We, we'll yeah, let that be was, gone. How's that? It was very upset. So. so do I have any comment? I have a motion on the floor and I have a second. Do I have any comments? Any questions? Okay. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none here, none. The motion has been approved. It will go to disciplinary hearing on March the 6th. Yes, sir. That does not mean stop. Nope. And we would love to know that there was something resolved and everybody was happy and waved when you pass each other McDonald's, wherever. Yep. So that'd be great. Yes, sir. Thank you. That, Thanks. Is everything you. okay, Ms. Leo? I'm just trying to make sure that everybody understands that doesn't change that the board can still take not. action on the disciplinary day. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Feet. This takes us into the disciplinary hearing portion, Madam Secretary.
Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. This first item is a restitution only hearing. Um, it has to do with James B. Freeman doing business as Freeman Roofing, state registered license number RC0058058. Um, Contractor Competency Board complaint number 230670COM. It's in regard to Nick and Chloe Sexton, the complainants at 101 South F Street, Pensacola, Florida, 32502. This is in the city limits. Um, as you can recall, at the last meeting, uh, there was a hearing for disciplinary action, and Mr. Freeman was found in violation and assessed a fine. At that time, uh, there was some discussion about restitution and the board directed the Sextons to come back with um, a restitution amount. I believe that has been attached to this, um, to the agenda as a backup item. Uh, at the Sextons as well as uh, Mr. Hamad are present. Um, if you want to have a full-blown hearing in regard to this or you just want to be able to ask them some questions, I do request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence for this hearing. So moved. Do have a second? Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion to be approved to move this uh, attached material into evidence. Um, so... Mr. and Ms. Sexton did provide us with uh, some documentation in regard to a restitution amount. Um, they are present. If you would like to ask them questions, they would need to be resworn for this particular hearing. And again, Mr. Hamad is present. Um, if he would like to provide testimony in regard to uh, that restitution request. Can I ask a question? Um, would this be better served to be moved to the next disciplinary hearing? To be so no this okay. is this is only inclusive of that previous hearing where you did find him in violation mr. Freeman in violation um, you may want to talk to um, mr. miss Sexton in regard to this and then also mr. Maud if you'd like to do that I will have them sworn so in clarification this bid proposal is directly connected to what we just moved to the disciplinary hearing? So this is twofold. Keep in mind that you found Mr. Freeman in violation of, t of failure to supervise. At that time, there was an Arcadia uh, report. This, is, this bid proposal is part of that report um, at that same hearing for disciplinary the board directed us to take a further look into possible violations so the short answer is yes it is inclusive of what it was just determined at the probable cause hearing but this restitution amount only pertains to that previous hearing it's not something you would hold waiting on that other case to go through. Now, if you determined that during, if that one were to precede the disciplinary hearing and you found him in violation, there could be possible additional restitution ordered for those items. Uh, but the convoluting lines. This is what happens when there's multiple cases involved in one situation. Yeah, that, because if we approve a restitution today, that stops anything from happening of what we just gave them the opportunity to follow through with and hopefully everybody walk out of here happy. And that may be We're what you want to talk to the Sextons about, whether they want to proceed with this or wait until after. That, that's why I'm suggesting right. that you talk to the parties. Right. I just wanted to make sure we had all of our, everybody up here was clear. Yeah, clear and also time. want to... Um, double check so the restitution and the amount that the sextons are asking for is to redo the entire roof uh, that's a, that would be a question for is the that sextons. correct well do you want to swear them in so we can <laughs> please let's, hear, let's swear everybody in yeah let's swear everybody in so the restitution that you're asking for is to do redo the entire roof is that correct mr sexton if you could come up please 
and just whoever's going to speak, you have to state your name and address yes, for the record. Yes, Nicholas Sexton, 101 South F Street, Pensacola, Florida, 32502. Um, just a reminder, we did do the 558 notice. Um, we gave them the 45 days to give us an engineering report. They did not do that. Um, it was not to say they can't do any work, but to provide engineering to, pr to move on. So that's what we were waiting on. Um, nothing happened. So with this restitution, we haven't, we've been waiting on them all these months to get an engineer to say what they did is okay. They will not. I mean, he just stood up here and said he doesn't have an engineer yet. They're still waiting on one from Montgomery. We've hired Arcadia because we do have to have a roof that's not leaking. But I don't want to cut you off. But yes. Did they provide the engineering report? An engineer report? Arcadia, Arcadia have they provided an engineering report? No. Structural. William Radcliffe, 2852 Angus Circle, William, Florida. Uh, our reports signed by an engineer of the discrepancies on the roof and basically that the roof has to be replaced. Uh, we did not provide any upwind uh, loads or uh, uh, the rafters or structural sound for that type of roof. Okay. And I think why, what he means by that too is that they have to take off the metal to see what's underneath first, um, knowing that it's just the one by four not for the structural part you would have to they, they the structural engineer typically would just have to see what's there how it's connected how the purlings are connected etc yeah so unfortunately a lot of it you can't see because uh there's a paneling on the inside that that covers the rafters um, we do see some staining uh in areas that has visible purlins um, so uh, what we got to do is we'll have to uh, remove some paneling to see the connections between right but you would have to take the whole roof off to, to find that, just to spot check. Typically, that's a, a, a section of it you would, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why you're mm -hmm. you would. And again, like I said before, we've been open to work with Freeman, you know? Like, please just tell us what you guys are going to do and let's fix it. We can't just leave this roof on. This is our only option. Unless you guys tell us somebody else to go out and get another engineering report, I will. But this is all I know to call. All I've been told to call was Arcadia. And... I don't know what else to do. I'm not a builder. You know, I do weddings. I'm just trying to get our roof done correctly. I'm not trying to get anything more out of the Freemans. I've asked them over and over to fix this roof. I'm like, please come fix the roof. And what are we doing? I mean, we're still talking about getting an engineer four, four months later. I don't know if an engineer in town takes that long. It's just, it's a long time for our roof to be left as is. Do y'all have questions for me? I feel like your motives are, are pure with what you're doing. You're not trying to gouge Freeman. I don't think anybody We are number one wedding business on the Gulf Coast. We do everything to make these brides. And if you know, I'm a lot different than a bride. If a bride was standing up here saying that we did her wedding wrong, we wouldn't hear the end of it, you know? It's just like brides expect a lot, we give them a lot. You know, I expected a lot with this roof. I expected to pass code, to get 20 years out of the roof, 15-year war uh, workmanship, and I have none of that now. It's like, this is why I'm where I'm at now. We've done every step possible to do this correctly. I'm not trying to push anybody into anything. I just want a roof that's not gonna leak and that's not gonna get blown off by a hurricane. I said at the very beginning, one of the points was, there's 30 screws on the south side facing the hurricane side where you can see the screws sticking down into the gutter. They miss the whole edge of the building. There's 30 screws. They've said since the beginning before the city assist meeting that they would take care of that. There is nothing being taken care of. It's like our roof is staying as is. It's, I mean, Mr. Freeman has not said, Nick, I'm gonna come fix anything. Besides, oh, we can't go out there and do anything because your attorney says, no, the attorney said, get the engineering letter, tell us what your plan is, and then right. you guys can move forward. Right, so, so the reason keeps... the screws are still there is because there's no, not been an engineer yet, which- Well, they said I before the city assist this... meeting that they would come put the screws in. So I... they. they they just I, haven't done it. I will have to say that, that uh, this does happen in our industry. Uh, Arcadia, uh, a lot of people are interconnected. And so not just any engineer can, with good conscience, do something whenever Arcadia works with a number of engineers. Not defending anybody, making a statement that that is a legitimate, and I think, and I would be fine be able if, to address that same if Mr. Thing Freeman that that came up happen. here and went through the Arcadia report and said that we're going to do this, this, and this, but we have not heard anything right. that and, they and plan to I, do. I'm not discounting your frustration okay. with that, Mr. Sexton, at all. But just making the statement that you guys deal with enough engineers. I know myself that you guys do. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I've been in forensic engineering since 2009, 
And uh, I, I know a lot of engineers in the state of Florida. And connected. And, when, and because of that, yes. just anybody's going to. And, and we all reach out to each other for advice and, and, and knowledge. Um, when uh, engineering request gets pushed out, out of state to another state, nobody wants that liability on their stamp because uh, they know it's done wrong. Mm -hmm. if, if you see the report and you see the discrepancies noted and against the manufacturer guidelines, even against the Florida Billing Code and right. we can list off the codes, right. no Florida engineer is going to say, hey, this is a good roof. You're going to have to replace the whole thing. So it puts us back into the same situation though of and the city is also requested an engineering report am i correct in saying that the city requested september. that is correct in okay. september at the city assist yeah and we were all there for that rafiq mr freeman yeah. everybody was there for that meeting it was recorded everybody knew what was expected i mean since september they've been told to get an engineer and actually on that point they could have hired arcadia before we did we waited for that city assist to go a whole month and then we finally came to y'all and then we finally hired the lawyer so there was a lot of time before we hired arcadia that they could have hired an engineer there was over a month or two and they never took action because they didn't think anybody was serious and i think to this day they don't think this is serious and our roof is serious it is my building my life is serious and i want my roof fixed is what i'd really like let me just, I'm going to ask some qualifying yes. questions because I, I understand as a business owner, you're extremely frustrated and, and I agree that, you know, this should have been top priority in, in the world of Freeman Roofing. I, I get you. So I'm just, please don't be frustrated with no. me, my, 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 my questions. How much did you spend in, in attorney fees at this point, roughly? Just roughly. I believe 10000 right now. We're about a little less than 10000 with Arcadia. Okay. And, and what did you spend so far with Acadia as far as oh, the sorry, engineering? that's ten grand total. Um, okay. Arcadia was six thousand. Arcadia was six thousand, and our lawyer is right now at four thousand. For the clerk's benefit, uh, can you yes. either? I don't know. Were you sworn in? Yes. Okay. Uh, Chloe Sexton, one ten Shoreline Drive, Gulf Breeze, Florida three two five six one. Thank you, Bill. Uh, roughly, how many days? I guess. If you had to quantify it, how many days have you guys been, um, I guess, put out of business, so to speak, because of the venue not being available or the venue having issues because of the challenges that have been happening because of the roof? Yeah, um, that's a great question. So I'm a wedding planner. I'm a problem solver by trade. So there's really nothing that would put you know, me out of business to do these weddings. I'm going to do them no matter what. Um, the quality has been affected. You know, okay. um, our skylights we had planned to enclose and we weren't able to do that because we're waiting on, you know, the specialists and all these inspections and such. Um, so was there any time that you had to offer maybe um, a bride a discount because of an inconvenience because of, you know, in order to make it right in your world, you made it right in their world, so yeah, to speak, where definitely. you had to, you know, move do I've had know? I've had a few clients mention like when are those going to be enclosed? Um, there has been a few mentions of the staining spots that are on the ceiling. I mean, we run a really reputable wedding business. People come to the venue because it's five star rated. It's a luxury wedding venue, mm -hmm. so to see stainings um, on the bathroom tiles, you know, we're constantly painting those tiles. We're just trying to you know keep the boat afloat um, until this gets resolved. And we were, we were really hoping that they would come out and do the right thing. We've waited and waited, and I think it was the last director of the board before you that made the suggestion you need to have a specialist come and that's why we hired arcadia we waited and waited and if, if we need to hire the engineer i will i'm already out all this money and whatever the next step is that i need to do we'll do it um I, just the city tony clement told them to hire the structural engineer they said no problem we have engineers on staff that's in the re video recording that they tell us they have engineers on staff it'll be no issue um, we were, we were, we've been told that Jimmy's daughter, Melissa has been, was working on it. Uh, Jimmy told Nick that in person, um, when they came to replace the boots. Um, my main concern is that the, when they came and cleaned the rust off the roof, which was from installation error, they scraped off the coating. And so I'm just at a loss, you know, for me aesthetically, it's like if the ru if the, if the roof rusts, what happens then? It's all compromised and that's outlined in the Arcadia report among I think it's like 30 other things and just a reminder at the city assist meeting he did say get engineering and we did not just hire Arcadia 
they had a chance to go get their own engineering, which would have been before any discrepancies with an Arcadian engineer. And they're still not making moves with that. So it's not us trying to take their engineering away from them. It was just us like, okay, we've got to continue to move forward. And so the, the proposal that you're asking for, for restitution, is the 300 and... 382,663.98. Yes, it's up on your screen. And that's based on this from and, our and we would also be basing it on something if uh, Freeman brought it in, you know? Okay. But we have nothing else. So in your opinion, from Arcadia's standpoint, is this the type of roofing system that should have been put on to begin with? No, no, ma'am. It's uh, they, they should have evaluated the roof and noticed that it was wood purlings from the beginning, um, and then they should have. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, what you're proposing is what should have been done to begin with. Well, what what my proposal is is the whole roof is being replaced, and I can break down that estimate for you all into sections on how you'll want. Uh, I, I guess what I'm, I'm maybe I'm not making I, myself I think, clear. I think, I think I the just, question I think, question. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, question. What you're asking is if that roof should have been done in the first place, and that's no, because Mr. No, Freeman no, said No, sir, that's could. not what she's asking. She's asking, is what you have on here what you feel like is the right way to install it? Is that right, Ms. Mary? Well, but not just the right way to install it, but was this what, what you're proposing, is that what Freeman should have done and recommended to begin with? Like... Because I know that you, Mr. Sexton, asked for this particular kind of roof. I did for, not. Oh, I thought you did. Again, I did not ask oh, for the, I'm sorry. I did not ask for this type of metal. I've said that a couple of times. Sorry. Uh, I did not ask for the Retro R. What I said is I've watched the YouTube video, and I, this is what I said to Mr. Freeman. I watched the YouTube video, and I've seen that they take metal purlins, and they put them across the old wooden purlins, and then they put another roof on top of okay. that. So there's actually a gap between the two pieces of the metal. Mr. Freeman said, I've got a better product. product. It's Retro R. It doesn't need the metal purlins. You put it right on top of the other metal. Okay. And that's when I was like, oh, he knows what he's doing. He also said, I've done this metal before. I've installed it before, which I don't know if he has. Um, but he did say he's done retro R before. So he should have known what was involved in it. So my question is, 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 are you, Arcadia, saying that this is the type of roof that should have been installed at the, from the get-go by Freeman. This is this is the type of product that should it, have happened, and this is the system that should have happened, not what did happen. So so uh, the manufacturer of the roof that's on there now it clearly says that engineers should have been hired to see uh, if this type of roof was capable of being installed on that building. Uh, that was never, that never happened. Um, so if we were hired from the beginning to do this roof, uh, uh, to, to do the investigation, we would have known that from the very beginning. We would never have recommended this type of roof uh, to uh, the sextants. We would have said, hey, you really need to go this route. Okay. And that route is what you're recommending? Here. Well, now what, what they did is they got the, the metal over the metal. And but at that time, at that time, if you had the opportunity to come in and assess the roof, would you have recommended something similar to what Freeman did, would you have come in at that time, not, not today, but at that time, would you have gone with this particular, say, hey, you know what, you're just gonna, uh, our opinion or uh, uh, you know, evaluation is you need to redo the entirety like you're requesting. No, if, if, if I came in, I probably would have done a little more research. I'm not really a fan of a roof over a roof, so I would never have gone that direction, uh, but there is roofs that go over roofs with metal purlins, like you said, and that's probably the route we would have gotten. Uh, move towards. Uh, we would have had a structural engineer actually evaluate the wind loads and uplift on that roof to see if that could be done. Um, and we would have started from uh, with the engineering uh, recommendations on the loads. I have a question for you, uh, yeah. Mr. Arcadia. Uh, I, I, what was your name again? It's, it's William, but you can call Mr. me Bill if you want. Mr. Bill, sorry. Yeah, that's Mr. Right. Arcadia is not the right name. Um, how many squares is involved here of the metal and how many squares is of the modified? So, so what we did was we had professional roofing go out there to uh, provide a price on uh, what they have to do to fix that roof. Um, and then 
uh, what we did is we took their quote and we added it with an installation quote, a painting quote, and all the other little things that had to be done, including structural engineering, we added uh, to that uh, quote also. Um, and that's why that number is the way it is. So you do not know how many squares? Uh, somewhere I read it. I could probably go back and dig into it. Um, I probably read it from somewhere in the professional roofing uh, information. So I had to go How back big is the building? How many square 10, feet? 10,000 yeah. square feet. I don't have my little thing with me. 10,000 square feet. The typical squares be 100 if you just done the old formula. 100-ish squares. 100-ish. I'm not trying to. 96. I just uh, have a gut check. All right. When I see 382,000, and if I even divided it by 100, and I see $3,820 a square. So what's in this also is the roofing, professional roofing quote alone is $2,000. Two thousand two hundred and thirty-seven thousand one hundred and seventy-one. Um, two hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars to replace the roof. Yes. I, uh, I just my two cents to the board here is I cannot feel comfortable with three hundred eighty-two thousand dollars or three thousand eight hundred twenty dollars a square, based on the amount of work that I'm seeing read in this report. In fact, it feels borderline that it's ballooned and I can't feel you, you you know there's other people up here who's got good experience with this as well and so you what want to comment uh, to this some of the board I'd like to bring this guy to come up here and tell us ask him some questions okay so just for the record Mr. Waters is asking for Mr. Freeman to come forward or for Freeman yeah, construction Mr. His yeah, that's what I wanted to make sure first. Ms. Rafiq, would you please post the podium? Rafiq Ahmad, 4201 Auckland Road, Pace, Florida, 32571. Mr. How many squares did y'all put on there? Approximately 96, give and take a couple. I mean, 100. And, and that fair. averaged out to how much a square? Um, 89,000? So yeah, roughly. Whatever that so, is. So I had $900 a square, pretty much. I know you can't give a, a quote, but just give us a ballpark idea. If you were to tear everything off and put it back on. Uh, tear off, it'll be close to what, pretty much what they paid, uh, replacing the panels. Um, <clears throat> now the, the one thing that we cannot see is what's underneath. Now the Nick, Nick Sexton's was given a quote based on his request. Yeah. He said that Jimmy told him that our panel or the way to go, um, after the fact, after the, everything was installed, um, he does his research. He stays up and all night doing his research, bring me manuals and stuff like that. I think, and no disrespect to them or anybody in this room, that all this research should have been done before agreeing to say, okay, let's just move forward with this. You know, um, that we did submit everything to the city when we applied for the permit on a re-roof, and we did attach the uh, the actual instruction report. And I, I personally, uh, Memorial Day weekend, went up there and posted the permit on the door as we requ required and put the installation report as well. So everything for the inspector to see. So they, they were given plenty of ample time to go over the report, go over the estimate and say, okay, this is not gonna work for us. Let's move on to the next thing. Um, I can tell you from experience, um, we do government contract and with government contract things a little bit more expensive. <clears throat> um, my government contract, if I turn in a, a bid for three hundred and sixty-five or $85,000 for a 100 square roof, um, 
I would be, they'll take it, trash it, because that's just astronomical. And, uh, and I haven't seen their report and what they're recommending to do. Apparently, we not only they have to tear it off, we have to do a bunch more work underneath that we're, we're not, we didn't know that needs to be done. And they're trying to hold us liable for it. Um, I, I do ask the board that I know we have the hearing in, in, in few day in a couple of months to consider that we're <clears throat> at the time that we're hopefully we'll have everything ready to go. It'll be boom, boom, boom. Here's the plan. Here's what we're going to do. Here's the fix. And then we don't have to worry about the 300 and some thousand. We'll make it right. And now I'm not at liberty to spend somebody else's money. Of course, I'll have to discuss that with Mr. Freeman. I won't want to spend your money or anybody on the board's money without discussing it with them. So that's that's definitely a, a factor. So, that's your question. I know they mentioned if you give them half the money back one time, that might work. No, that was that was before. I'll come back to <laughs> that. Oh. Okay. That was when I was. Ne never mind. Do you want me to step aside? Oh, yeah, I'd like to explain that if that's what we're going to say. Um, so when I said that at that last meeting, I said I would like I was given the offer of it would be nice to get forty five thousand dollars back while they continue to work on the roof. That was the option. They have all our money and they haven't continued to work on the roof. So it's like you usually don't pay the full balance if there's an open permit. That's where I was going with this. They got the permit reopened. Melissa Freeman, his uh, future wife, said we closed the permit out. We're keeping your money. Well, the permit's reopened. So if the permit gets reopened or fails, they should give us half of our money back until the roofs continue to be fixed. That's where I was going with oh, that. Oh, okay. Yeah, it wouldn't do any good right now for us to have half of our money back because I would have to have a roof that still has to come off. That was pre-damage. Yeah, that, a lot of this was before the Arcadia report. That was, that was also pre-damage to the coating. That was before they came in. We, we were trying to come up with a plan and it was and like, you guys recommended that we let them clean that was right. y'all's recommendation yes, to right. let them continue to we work we were hoping obviously to everything get to that we've result. done we've gone by y'all's words you know like do this do that we were told to get another uh inspector and they were we did it it's like we we're just doing everything to make this whole again the 327 uh the 385 i'm sorry but 237 is to repair the roof all right that's what they got from professional roofing only 237 is to repair the actual roof itself. So we paid 89,000 to get a roof over roof, which Mr. Bachelor said, you do know you can do a roof over roof one time, one time. Everybody remembers that. And I said, yes, it's legal. What I asked for was completely legal. All right. I didn't ask for him to come in and sneak this roof on real quick and let's get it done. I paid $89,000 for a roof that was supposed to last 20 years, 15 year workmanship. I have neither one of those. You can't repair our roof by taking that metal off and slapping new metal on. I had said that one week after we got the leaks. I go, Mr. Freeman, order new metal for the roof and put it on and don't put as many screws in like you did because you did a thousand screws extra. All right. He said, I'm not going to do that. I don't, I would rather claim bankruptcy than order that new metal. And that's when Rafiq, we go back to the beginning when Rafiq said, I'm going to get the gooseneck trailer. I'm going to head up north. I'm going to get the metal to replace the, the however many. He said one, three, five, ten. It would have been good for him to say a number how many panels he was going to, going to replace. He still to this day has not said how many panels did he plan on replacing. One, three, five, ten. That's what we all heard. The only way to fix our roof now that it has a thousand extra holes in it, when they take this metal off, it's not like you could just throw down another sheet of metal because there's going to be all these extra holes that we're not supposed to be in the intermediate area. The only place you're supposed to, I've looked at a hundred roofs now. There's nobody in town that has as many screws as we do. I mean, there's, you could look at two roofs and they might not have to combine as many screws as we do. It's not going anywhere, right? Yes. It's not going to go anywhere. But if you look at the screws, how they're attached and stuff, there's angled screws. There's screws that have the rubber not touching the metal. There's way too many screws done improperly. I would have been fine if Arcadia would have said, let's take that top metal off and put a new sheet down. We could put some weather mat there to cover all those extra thousands of holes that are there. Put a weather mat over the old roof, put the new metal on top. But that's not the case. Do too. You can't put metal on top of a wood structure. We are not asking for anything out of the norm with this Arcadia report. What I'm asking for is to get a roof that will last us 20 years. We cannot fix what is there. That's the problem. They didn't follow the manual. We could have 
passed, everything been fine. If we wouldn't have had the leaks, everything would have been fine. We had the leaks. We had to do something about it. We, we understand. I know. And I'm just trying to say to there find... is a huge difference in the price, but that's because you can't fix what's there. They have destroyed it, and they haven't provided a way to fix it. Like, we're here today because they have not said, right. this is what we're going to do, Mr. Sexton. Right. And I just want to hear that, or we have, to, we have to move on and get a new roof. Let's give you an opportunity to answer. Right. How are you planning on uh, How are you planning on as, as I mentioned in the last hearing, that um, structure engineer is, is a must. There's no ways around it. We can talk about this till we're blue in the face. We have to have a structure engineer right. to say yay or nay. If, if they come back says it's a yay, this is what it is. We do have action plan in place. We, have, we can deploy our assets immediately. To, to rectify the situation and make them whole. And then we can, like I said, can wave goodbye, hello, whatever. But I guess um, the question that I have is that, let's just say the structural report comes in and he says you have to do a total redo. Are you willing to do it at no additional cost? At, at no additional cost to them. Yeah. That, like I said, I can't spend somebody else's money without discussing it with them. But I'm asking you, would that be the right thing to do, being that the roof that's there now is what's caused these issues so if the report comes back and it states that you cannot re-roof a re-roof and you would have to go back and redo the entirety just in your opinion i know you have to get permission yes would that be the right thing to do would that be something that you would be willing to take back and say hey this is what we have to do yeah. and what i'm trying to do is trying to avoid kicking the can down the road absolutely uh so i think if you will give us that leverage or latitude and say yes or no, whatever that may be, to help the board make a decision today in, in, in both directions, regardless of what it is. Yep. To answer your question would be if my name is on the billboard that says this is my company, absolutely yes. That's the answer. I mean, that's as close as possible. And in your say. experience being in the roofing business for this many years, what do you think the report will come back as? I mean. We know as builders that we know what the report's going to say. We just wait for the report. But what does your opinion say? In my opinion, um, I'm sure they have their experts. But in my opinion, I think and I believe that they're going to come back saying this is a solid roof, but you need to fix these issues right here that needs to be handled um, and fixed properly. You know, when I talked to the people up in Montgomery, he said we, we deal with this um, not often, but often enough that we know there is a way to fix these problems and it's not too expensive to rectify the situation on our part um, that, and don't don't get me wrong we won't hold a penny to save a penny to not to make them happy you know we, we will do whatever it takes to make it right you know um, and like I said we were ready to deploy but I do have a comment and this is not again to go back and forth uh, for, for somebody to stand here and swore to tell the truth nothing but the truth um to say that mr freeman said he much rather file bankruptcy and put a new roof that's an inaccurate statement jimmy will never ever say such a thing <coughs> roofing is his life his livelihood he's put his kids through college his grandbabies and we're hoping grand grandbabies will be the one taking over the the, the business one day so that bankruptcy is not an option and, and I would ever say that. I mean, he, he would never come out and say that to somebody. So I, I would say that's a false statement. I, I have a question for staff, actually legal, because at this point I feel like we're at a um, crossroads mm -hmm. as to what to do. So I, I think if I was to guess, we're all kind of in agreement that 389000 is too much for restitution. Um, but if we put an order in for restitution, we've stopped. Is that what you're telling us? We've stopped them being able to actually fix the problem anyway. Yes? Right. If you're going to order them to pay money, then you, can't, then you don't want to get involved in ordering them to also take action because then that would be doubling the restitution, basically. Um, so, so we have to pick one, one or the other. Or you can you could pick a hybrid of that, but that's what 
I thought where we were going with the original question with bringing everybody up to the stand, and it seemed like to me we got back into trying the case. So you may just want that question answered. Do they want money or do they want services? Okay. That was so, the intent of... So, yeah. so that's the question. Do you want money or do you want services? <laughs> um, again, seeing that we've waited six months, we have not got any service from them. Um, we've given them every opportunity. I'm not saying no, I didn't want Freeman. Um, I do think that their job was very lousy and I would be uh, disappointed to have them redo the roof without so which like, would you rather have I would rather have the money okay because it's time to move on I need to hire somebody tomorrow to fix our roof it needs thank to have you. professional roofing so they would get in there tomorrow and thank fix you it. Sir. all right thank you um, if we go this money route I'm gonna suggest that we find a secondary bid that's that was where I was going we need to get an independent yeah. party to get us a estimate what was the total amount of your original contract with the Saxtons? Eighty-nine thousand. Okay. Eighty-nine thousand. And then we spent ten on attorney. Ten on attorney fees. Yeah. But see, the thing is, is we cannot fix our roof for eighty-nine thousand. That's the problem I have. It's like we thought we had a twenty-year roof. I, in so twenty years, we're, I would we're fine. Under, we understand but that. Okay. But that's the reason. Sorry, we asked just, you, excuse me. But that's we, the reason we need to we discuss okay. up here yeah. with ourselves. That's just, the but, reason we asked you: Do you want services or do you want the money? So now we have to make a decision on the dollar amount. Uh, and it's we definitely it's not going to be three hundred eighty-two thousand. Uh, so it's determination based on the fact what your original contract price was, and then also again not allowing them to come in there and say, hey, we want their don't want their services. So now we have to make that decision based on that. One more question, I guess, is if we do allow them to offer their services, what's the route on that? Do they get well? Them? That's why I wanted to ask him the question first. Uh, let's just say the report comes back and it's a redo then are you willing to do that? And he said, yes, if it was his company, he would allow them to redo it because that's the right thing to do because original, the re-roof was the problem here. So there he's willing to go back to Mr. Freeman and let him know that the right thing to do is this. Now, if Mr. Freeman decides at his discretion not to, then it gives us a little more leverage on the board to understand that, you know, what's the right thing to do here? Then come up with a dollar value amount and in between now and then it would not hurt if we were to decide to prolong this is to look and see for a second opinion because I think the board's going to ask for a second opinion on the roof and we definitely want to see the engineer's report. Uh, so there's going to be a delay uh, based on my opinion, I can't speak on behalf of the rest of the That's board, we that we still want to see the engineer's report so we can evaluate the engineer's report and hopefully and give these guys enough time for that. Now whether they do it or not, that's totally up to them and whether you guys decide to go ahead and move forward with Arcadia of course, that's the discretion that you have to do that. Uh, but our goal now is to determine what is the value of the damages that have been um, uh, assessed, what to assess here. Okay. And that's what we will do. So, uh, you know, we're going to ask for a second opinion from you guys also. And then, you know, maybe these guys can come in. However they want to, you want to do it, we can't provide you, but we'll tell you what we're looking for to move forward. Can I just ask a question? Absolutely. Do you suggest that we that we go ahead and hire and pay for the engineer? Is that what you would like to see at the next meeting? I can't tell you not to do that or to do that, but that's what they need to do. Again, if you get your report done faster than them, then clearly there's no intent on their half to continue to okay. or just to. I'd like the to interject here. We can't offer advice. Yes. Is that right, Ms. Lee? Again, we, this we is can't my offer opinion advice. that I'm telling you. Okay. We okay. can't That's do why it. We, went ahead with we have to. We Hold on. I was trying to keep her from having to tell you that. <laughs> okay, so if you can hold off just a moment, let me talk to the board. So one of the options that you can do, since there seems to be confusion about what what can be done, is they can hire somebody to repair the roof. And they can go ahead and get the roof or, or get the roof, whatever they need to get done to the roof to make it work. They could do that. And they could come back with that as a, as a restitution request also. So there's, that's the, I guess that's the option that, that's out there, which maybe wasn't coming out clear was you want services or if you want money. But if you want money, one of the things that they could do is they could go hire somebody and then you would have clearer numbers as opposed to, and because this, I don't get the impression that, Arcadia is going to be who repairs the roof. They're just an engineering firm. Consultant. Consultant. Consulting. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, professional roofing was a roofer that's going to repair the roof. Okay. Uh, but one of the reasons why this is so high is you also had to bring up to the uh, affordable billing codes with the uh, strapping um, and the engineering. This 
building was built in 1946? 46. 46. So it probably has no hurricane strapping. So to put hurricane strapping in, you had to remove some sheetrock and some paneling. And, and once you remove that second layer of metal panel, they have spray foam, which is bonded to that, which is also going to rip all that spray right. foam up. But that, again, that's outside of the scope of what we're yeah. looking at. Go ahead, Miss Christine. That's what we were just consulting with Tim Tolbert because we just redid the Florida Building Code for Oskaloosa County. Right. County. So um, my understanding is that, Mr. and that would all be something that you would weigh in. But the the they need to find out what they're going to have done, what they want to do, and if they want to go forward with this, and they feel like there's strapping that's required. I can tell you, Tim Tolbert's going to say it's not required, um, but. All those decisions they make, then evidence will be taken on whether or not that's something you consider. So they need to make sure that as they move forward and they look for restitution, that what they're asking for restitution is something that this board could actually um, award. Mr. Tolbert, the only, the only time that uh, hurricane strapping is required is on a residential uh, structure that meets the qualifications for uh, avalor a certain amount of avalorium tax. It's worth so much. Uh, and then you have to start doing things like that. But not, this is a commercial building. Yes. It's commercial. Yeah, that's not required. It's not required. Mr. Tolbert is actually on the commission, aren't you? Yes. Yes, sir. He's an expert. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Okay. Christie, for bringing us that. So that comes back to us. So anyway, going back to what I was mentioning and is we're that, finished, Mr. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what we need to do is uh, we're recommending to have a second opinion. Uh, clearly, again, um, uh, both parties can continue moving in the direction they want and we'll evaluate it at our next meeting uh, by then, but look and see if we can get uh, a second opinion on the roofing price. Uh, that's being, and not only that, but also an engineering report so we can look and determine yes. the value of the restitution. So as I understand what you're saying is what you'd like to do is continue the restitution hearing. And the things that may influence your opinion in that is the engineering report and a second opinion as to the cost of the roof. That, that would be my motion. We are, okay. we are going to ask for a second uh, quote. Is that fair to say a second quote for the roofing and we would like to see the structural engineering part this also gives time for you know again we're not offering advice but based on the previous case for them to continue forward and if they did come to a resolution again this would take the restitution out because it would be fixed but in the meantime, I, I we think... won't give restitution here because we can't feel comfortable with this amount until we have more information. Right. They're not asking for Freeman to come back out. They want so, the money and Freeman's so out of it. That's out now. Yeah. So what we discussed on this last one is done. Okay. So in that case. It's not done or is done. No, 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 no. Let, let me clarify done. this for if, you. If he can't have a structural engineer come back and fix the thing, then it's done. End of story. Wait. So, in theory, it could be done. Well, he um, said no. But let me clarify it for you. Uh, the Sexton's goal now is is to have them reimbursed and, and money over Mr. Freeman coming out. I mean, coming back. Um, the previous determination on that previous case was to proceed to the disciplinary hearing. Now, you have to take those counts into consideration. Did he do this? Did he do this one? Did he make that whole? They would be determined one by one. It does not automatically do away with that other probable cause hearing. Right. Because there were but various... Saying, that, there's uh, no way it can be rectified. It will go to probable cause and we will have to determine based on the information we have at that point. But there's no Correct. way it's going to get thrown out. It just doesn't automatically go away. Right, right. But so, it's procedural. But at the same time, he can't do anything to rectify it. And we'll have to take care of that at the disciplinary Correct. because and he's been stopped. So we'll we'll deal with that when it comes next in March. Correct. That would be something you right. could consider in your right. determination. Right. So at this point, it's just a matter of the money. And with that being said, I feel like it's the uh, wish of the board to have at least a second opinion uh, of a quote and perhaps some structural 
engineer information. Is that what I'm hearing? So what you're asking for from, just to be clear, we cannot make them get a second opinion. No. We cannot make them to get, we can't make anybody get an engineering report. However, you were saying you'd like to continue the, restitu continue the restitution hearing. If those are made available, it will, in, it, it will be taken into consideration. So that could also come from Mr. Freeman. Both of those could come from Mr. Freeman. The a second only other opinion. thing that I would see here today for us as the board is the fact that there's been 89 paid to Freeman and 10000 for a legal thing, and $99,000. That's the only thing I can see that's sitting out there, Mr. Bell. That, that's what I was, we had a scope of work that was proposed to be done for that amount. And that scope of work could have been done for that amount. To add additional things to it, such as this uh, proposes, I think is over and above what was the original intent of the roofing. So if the roofer is not given the opportunity to repair, as any contractor would need to do, have the opportunity, I know it's been dragging out, um, I don't see how in good conscience I could give more than what's out. Already been paid. I would agree with that. Does that make sense? Just That's to clarify just for the Sextons, um, in, this, in this request also includes damages resulting from improper installation of the original. But we don't have any proof of that structurally. I'm going to, there is a report provided by the Sextons that says it exists. Now, correct, you're asking for a structural engineer's report now uh, to confirm that what they've stated is accurate. Okay? Correct. So, correct. I just so want to make I, sure. like I say, I'm, I'm, I agree with the fact that here's what we know is the expense today or the what has been put forward damages resulting from the work they may have done it still needs to be determined and I don't know if those damages in the insurance world could be claimed against the insurance yes if there are damages that they can prove that were done as a result of the work done by Freeman then yes those can be claimed against his insurance at that point not yet. We, we still need to do some discussion here. So, so go ahead, Ms. Christie. I was just going to say, at this point, based on the prior chart, based on the prior case, you've determined, and based on the statements uh, by Mr. Bell, then it sounds like to me you've determined there's approximately $99,000 of restitution at this point. You can decide whether or not you think that is substantiated by the facts. You, you can recall in the past that what we have done is allowed um, people to come back to say, okay, but we, now we have this estimate on damages alone and to bring their damages later. So that's also an option that's before this board based on the history of how you've handled it in the past is you can make a ruling on what you have before you at this time and then if they, come, if they have any additional damage estimates on top of that, then they could bring that back. Thank you. That's what I was going to lead into is once there is a structural engineer report then we could allow we've always done this them to come back and show that there is additional from the original okay would we not allow the additional six thousand that they paid to arcadia which said that which led us here i guess with the report that they gave that said that it was improperly done and they had issues in addition to the Right, that's what 89. we're saying. And including well, you, you attorney just, fees would be ten thousand dollars. Right, but you just keep you only refer to the two, and that's why I want to make sure you were also including the six for the arcade. Yeah, that's that's part of the ten thousand. Yeah. No, no, it wasn't. Was they it? said it was. It the was ten was the total. Was 10, total what was the ten was total. The ten was total, including the attorney fees, and Arcadia was ten. Yes. Okay, sir. excuse me. I thought it was separate. That's okay. Pardon me. So the eighty-nine plus the ten expense. That was what we were looking at. Would be the. Does that sound within reason, Ms. Christie, as far as our scope? It sounds like you have the, you, from what uh, Mr. Bell said, um, you have at least one person on the board that believes there's sufficient evidence to move, to go forward on the 89,000 right. plus right. the 10,000. Okay. And with, and with the option of the coming back. All right, I would, uh, one more chance for both Freeman and, and Sexton to say something, then we're going to have to make a decision here. So, uh, okay. 
I would request from the board to allow us, and I know you guys have given us ample time as well, as we mentioned, to provide a structural engineer uh, report um, to give us an opportunity to actually hire our own structural engineer to see what what was done wrong and if it was wrong and it was right. Uh, and if it's wrong, obviously Mr. Freeman has to make the prop, you know, the call to. But you do understand the quandary we're in in yes. that September, October, November, December, January. I am completely four happy. months now, and I we've already talked about the local guys being connected to Arcadia. We've got yes. but four months. You understand we're we're against the wall here. Yeah, you're you're at the okay end of your rope. I understand. Just want to make sure. So we just want to make sure we go because here's the here's the dilemma. Uh, if we don't fix it, if we don't provide a report. And we go to the disciplinary hearing. It looks like we haven't done anything. But if we do, then we out that money as well. We'll, we'll deal with that at disciplinary yeah. because there's nothing yeah. we. Yeah, I understand yeah. that. Um, we, You'd be limited. We're willing at that point. to do whatever it takes if they allow us to go back and do these things. And I'll I'll set the appointment. I'll personally guarantee you, a structural engineer will be hired. If I have to pay out of pocket, out of my own pocket, I'll do it because I can't see this continue to smear our company all over the place um so but you that, have a right to bring whatever evidence you is yeah. to dispute the amount that this accidents are saying yeah. that their damages are so we can't tell you to get the report or not to but that's totally up to yeah. you you can come back to the board yeah. same as yeah. the owners can yeah, yeah. yeah we like, allow you to come back like we all know that there is pre-existing issues even before right. we even right. put the we, we would allow that yes. thank you mr Fair. Thank you. Mr. Sexton, Ms. Sexton, would one you like to? All right, I think I understand now, so I am fine with the 99, and we'll come back um, and ask for more once the engineering plans are done. Um, with the 99, I would like to, out of his pocket, pay for the engineering, like he just said, so I don't have to go and pay for that right after this. Um, he just said that they would handle the engineering, so I wouldn't mind with the restitution, 99,000, plus they handle the engineering, if but that's what they're offering. But the board here is not saying 99,000. That's in consideration. Okay. We have not uh, determined. We have not determined. I was just saying in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, do, I know it's going to cost more. And again, like I said before, we pay the 89,000 thinking with a guy that's done this for 42 years that I would have a roof for 20 years. Gotcha. It wasn't my intentions to have to pull that gotcha. roof off. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Just for the record, um, to make sure, I know we have a 10000 estimate on the cost that for the attorney and for the Arcadia. You you don't have any, I'm not aware that there was any receipts put, put into evidence. Right. So that may be something you want to reserve on and, right. and go with 89 and the exact amount that we do know that was paid out. Just make sure that what you're making des your decision on is based on the evidence that is before you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Christie. So it will be at their discretion if Freeman continues on, et cetera, and comes back with a structural report. And it will also be at the discretion of the sections to go ahead and get the roof done and come back with a secondary. What we have to decide today is based on the information in front of us and the length of time that it is taken. Do we go ahead and do action of restitution based on the existing contract. And thank you, Ms. Christie, for saying about the legal and the report without that documentation. The only documentation we have is for the 89,000 as of today. I think I just stated the obvious. <laughs> so we're open for a motion from anybody on how to move forward. We are, we are. So I don't feel comfortable voting on a dollar amount, not having all the evidence in front of us. Uh, so uh, my motion would be to go ahead and, uh, and again, I, I hate to use the word kick it down the road or uh, wait to, yeah, but we'd like to continue this. My motion is to continue this until our next board meeting or whenever that next boarding meeting is and look at the evidence that's provided to us to determine the true value of the damages uh, that we can have an opportunity to discuss and then decide whether or not to award it. Which or not. numbers are you would, would you be interested in having more information on? 
Well, right now you have a $99,000, $89,000 contract. Of course, we need invoices for the six and for the attorney cost. Uh, but we have a $89,000 uh, cost of a total redo of a roof. We know that's an absolute. Yeah. And so, but at the same time, we don't have enough evidence saying, is that roof 100% going to have to be ripped off and redone? Uh, we don't know if there's a way to salvage that roof uh, that's doable by whether it's Arcadia or whether it's by another company and determine that, look, the true value of the re-roof of this roof or to fix this roof is 30 grand, 40 grand, based on the original contract to redo the roof. Uh, so, you know, by awarding a dollar amount today uh, for the entirety of the $89,000, I just wouldn't feel comfortable. Uh, so, again, I would like to, um, and you can continuance. continue the continuance so that way for us to get more evidence to determine the value of the restitution that needs to be awarded here today. That would be my motion. Second. Okay, discussion. <laughs> Anybody else <laughs> well, here Lincoln, have can, some? Lincoln, correct us. Ms. Christie's. I'm just glad I don't have to transcribe it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Thank you. Thank you for your services. We are using every bit of them today. So we have a motion and a second. We have a motion for a continuance until we can get more detailed information of what will actually take to correct the defects. For the restitution amount. For the restitution amount, yeah. Correct. And have a second. Mr. Waters? Where are we going to get that information from? Well, we can't tell them to get it to us, so we, we're back here again next month. I believe the way the direction is going, and I know the Saxons are going to do everything they can to get the roof fixed, uh, whether they've started the re-roof, but whether they're under contract with another roof, but based on the evidence they can provide to us and on the other side, uh, Freemans have an opportunity to also uh, determine what their experts are going to be saying and determine that, hey, whether or not does this actually need a total replacement or is there an engineering report that says that we can go in and remanufacture or re, you know, redo what we need to do to get it to where it's satisfactory to code and to you know the city to pass the inspections on. Because that's what we're looking for. Uh, you know, I'm not looking for a re-roof. I need to know what's according to code and what's going to pass the inspections in order for mm -hmm. that roof to be in compliance uh, with the city or the county. So uh, I, I, I completely understand that the Sextons do not wish for Freeman to Correct. do any repairs. Correct. That's That's been made clear. Correct. It benefits the Sextons to provide uh, an additional um, quote, <laughs> estimate, whatever, uh, on what it would take for an independent neutral party to replace this roof um, based on what they have provided from Arcadia saying it has to be replaced. It is up to uh, Mr. Freeman's staff. It would benefit them if they were to come back with an engineer report that says it doesn't have to be replaced um, and provide that documentation on you know, what it would cost to repair, and then the board can make a decision based on that. So it benefits both parties to come back with additional information. Mm -hmm. Whether they do that or not is up to them. It would benefit Freeman to have that report that says it does not have to be replaced. It would benefit the sections to have a second number, quote, that says this is the cost to redo it. And that way it would give us our documentation. So your motion in no way restricts the abilities of the, of the right. sections to go right. ahead and get right. done what they need done. Correct. And we're not advising them and what that could to be do. Their, yeah. And that could be their second quote or, or yeah. whatever they decide on. They could go ahead and yeah. bring that information we're, back. We're not advising yeah. them what to do. Yeah. This is just things that would help. Us, again, we're us. determining the restitution value now. Uh, knowing that they're not going to be working together, both parties need to provide us enough evidence for us to sit here and make a, uh, you know, a good decision on what that value is going to be. That answer your question then, kind of, yeah. sort of. You got a question? No, it's the Okay. Any other questions here? Okay. okay. Then we'll take a vote. All in favor to have a continuance to the next meeting with the hope of getting more information in.
to make a determination, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none, the motion has been approved for continuance. So that will be in the February meeting? Correct. February 7th. February 7th, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Continuance into the February 7th meeting. Okay, I believe we have one more. Um, Chair, uh, can we please take a five minute uh, break before our next hearing? <sighs> Miss Joanne needs a break. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Joanne. Yeah, it was the motion that got her. If since it's her, <laughs> we'll do it. If it was the rest of these guys, no, I'm just kidding. Yes, five minutes.
all these legendary questions. He's like, one great thing to change here. Yeah. Down in you. Okay. There's a no-show.
excuse us. We are back in session. Yeah, we're in the overtime stage. You get an extra penny. Our next case, finally, is the last case. Madam Secretary. Last yes, case. sir. John C. Fortner doing business as Fortner's Home Improvements, Inc. State registered license number RC29027151. CCB complaint number 23101111 COM. It's in regard to James Scott Cook D doing business as JHB Auto Parts, known as Napa Auto Parts. They're the complainant at 9450 North Century Boulevard, Century, Florida, 32535. This is a, another meeting that was continued. Um, respondent did receive, uh, proper notice was sent to the respondent. Uh, Mr. Scott Cook, are you present today? Yes. And are you going to be providing to testimony for this hearing? Uh, yeah, I will at the hearing. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fortner, are you present today? Thank you. And are you going to be providing testimony? Yes. Uh, okay. At this time, I'm going to have all parties that are going to be providing testimony sworn in. And just a reminder, Ms. Reber was previously sworn. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Staff would request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing for this case be moved into evidence. Do you have a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion second for all the evidence to be moved in this case. All this. Historical evidence. To be moved into evidence in this case. All in favor raise your right hand. All opposed, same side. Seeing none, hearing none. Motion is approved to move into evidence. Uh, Ms. Reber, did we receive any additional documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? No, we did not. Okay, so no additional documentation. Um, I'm going to bring up the administrative complaint for this case. Scroll down. At the probable cause hearing, the board determined that there was probable cause to believe that the respondent violated Code Section 1837C1, 1837D8, and 1837D10. So 1837C1, um, the board believed that the respondent violated that code section by failing to correct the cited violations in the failed inspection report. 1837D8, the board felt the respondent violated that code section by failing to make corrections to the leaking roof, resulting in additional damages to auto parts that were to be sold by the property owner. And Code Section 1837D10, uh, the board felt the respondent violated that code section by failing to perform any work on the project for a period in excess of 90 days. Um, Mr. Scott Cook, if you could please come to the podium. This is your opportunity to address the board in regard to an update to any of these items. Uh, just state your name and address for the record, please. My name is James Scott Cook, 4726 Jerry Street, Milton, Florida. Um, on November the 1st, we had the first initial hearing. Uh, after the hearing, uh, I met with Mr. Fortner uh, and his office manager in the lobby. And he assured me that they were going to get to work on it and work out a plan. And um, and they asked me to sign a uh, some an execution letter of some sort, but it wasn't filled out. So I told them to just email it to me. I'd be glad to sign it once it's filled out and uh, get it back to me. Uh, on November the 3rd, he did come out to the property with someone to evaluate what they were going to do. He contacted me, uh, told me they had an idea and a plan. They were going to discuss it with the county uh, engineers to make sure that it was uh, proper and that they would get started on it. Uh, and that was my last communication with them. November 3rd? Yes, sir. Was it a notice of commencement or anything? Yeah, there? that was it, notice of commencement. Gotcha. And, and it just wasn't filled out, so they were right, going right. to fill it out. That's and I was going to Yeah, and I was going to I was going to uh, sign it once they That's sent okay. it to back to me. We did not get that yet uh, either. Okay. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to? No, any it. questions for Mr. Hall? Mr. Cook? Anybody? Okay. 
Mr. Fortner, if you'd like to come to the podium and address the board and give them an update on those three items, um, just state your name and address for the record, please. John C. Fortner, uh, with Fortner's Home Improvements, 580 Hickory Flats Road, J. Florida. In the NOC, he's talking about, I do have it here, um, and at, at that time, Jennifer is my notary. She works for me. She's not nothing to do with the company as far as any. She's just an operations manager. Um, and she was going to, we we're going to complete the form that day and have it notarized. His statement that day was he would uh, look at it and he'd get back with me. Nothing about emailing it completed or nothing. So, um, but before we get started on any of that, what I would want to recommend is number one idea that I have today is <clears throat> to I don't feel like it's been going over a year and a half and anything that I do he does not want the roof to pond water it's gonna pond water the roofs built in 1968 okay and it does this so there's nothing you can do except structurally go inside and raise the roof from the inside it, it's nothing to do with a roofing contractor Okay, a general contract would have to do that. So what I would propose today is for me to give Mr. Cook his $39,320 back and wash my hands of this. So that's where I stand right now, and I want to get y'all's thoughts on that. I do have Do you have a comment? Yes. State um, your name and address. My name is Jennifer Panizo, and address is... Jennifer Panizo, spell Y-E-N-I-F-E-R, last name P-A-N-I-Z-O. Address is 3849 James Estevall Street, Pensacola, Florida, 32526. From the last meeting to um, today's update, we actually reinstated, um, since I do have power attorney from um, Chris, I reinstated the permit effective 12-6-2023. Uh, with the recommendation to keep the same flutter, flutter approvals that we had originally um, applied for. Um, so the permit is currently active. We have not been able to complete a final inspection because no other work has been completed. Um, in addition to that, um, I just lost my train of thought. Um, oh my God. The permit. Yeah, the permit is already done. Do we oh. see you, the, we have a copy of the uh, permit that's yeah. been mm -hmm. reinstated? Yes, sir. We see that. It was approved 12-6-2023. Right. But no work was done, though. No. 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 The permit was reinstated, okay? Yeah. And before we done any work, we would have to go back to this permit with, if we done any more work there, with the type of product that we would be using, whether it be uh, TPO or uh, modified bitumen peel and stick, is, which is what I would recommend to be used on the job. Um, so, but this permit here, we just reinstated it based on what was used to begin with to have it back reactive. Anybody want to question Mr. Fortner? I have one myself. I think in, our meeting before, if I remember correctly, you had mentioned that it could be remedied by going in and putting the styrofoam foam, build that valley up and redo all of that. But you're saying now that that's nothing. I, yeah, you can. But that, I mean, but you're it's doing this. Right. But you're saying that that's not. Back then, if I remember correctly, you were saying that's what you would do to rectify. But yes. you're telling us today that that's 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 what need would need to be done. But you would Raise rather just reimburse. Inches. Yeah, go ahead. You would just rather reimburse money Without and it. walk out than what? take care of any of this. Yes. Okay. Now you do understand that that has nothing. The the, the monetary restitution, I guess we would call it, uh, has nothing to do with the disciplinary charges that's before yeah. you. Yes, sir. Okay, just making sure that two total different. Just making yeah, sure that you know that this is not like no, well, no, no. if you give the money, all of this goes away. Just yeah. want to make sure. Okay, Ms. Jennifer, I, I remember what I was going to say. Um, okay, <laughs> um, there's also an open claim uh, from uh, the insurance company, general liability for the interior damages that until the roof was actually 
resolved and you know remedy um, they could not pay the payment so that it's still gonna be into effect um, we just want to you know be able to make everybody happy and I feel in the same thing nothing that we do it's gonna make this right so it's better sometimes to just walk away not that we're not wanting to do the right thing but I feel it's we're gonna be here six more months and that's what we're trying to avoid just move on you know didn't work out but they're still they're gonna still get payment for the interior um, but the insurance company you know needs to settle that once you know the leaks have stopped so anybody have any comments on the the amount of money situation before we go into these counts <coughs> Ms. It was already done. Ms. Christie <coughs> and Ms. Jennifer. Yes, sir. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the restitution amount would be between Mr. Cook and Mr. Fortner. We're just dealing at this point with the so disciplinary. So what? So the procedural <coughs> part of this is we would go through these counts um, and make a determination on each of these counts. If uh, Mr. Fortner were to be in, found in violation of, of any of these counts, the board has the ability to order restitution. Now, Mr. Fortner has already given you basically an amount if the board should determine to find that amount for restitution to be paid to um, the complainant, and that be included in the final order. That is your finding, and, and that would be okay. the final order. Just want to make sure we're clarified up here on... Right, restitution at this point is a little bit ahead of where you are in the proceedings. Right, right. That's what I was. Anything else, Mr. Fortner? Mr. No, sir. Okay. Thank you all. So now we would make a determination on each count. Um, does the board find the respondent in violation of Code Section 1837C1? disregard or failure to correct building code violations or any municipal or county building codes, ordinances, or laws of the state of Florida. You, the board cited failing to correct the cited violations in the failed inspection report. Do I have a motion for this? To make a motion uh, for a violation of Scambia County Code Section 18-37 C1, disregard or failure to correct building code violations or any municipal or county codes, building codes, ordinances, or laws of the state of Florida. Any penalty? Uh, with a penalty of a $1,000. Second. I have a second. Do I have any discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion has been approved to be found in fault of the count one with a penalty of $1,000. As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of code section 1837 D8? For mismanagement or misconduct causing financial harm to the customer, the board decided that uh, the respondent failed to make corrections to the leaking roof, resulting in damages to auto parts to be sold by the property owner. Make a motion for count two in violation of Escambia County Code Section 18-37 D8, mismanagement or misconduct causing financial harm to the customer. Penalty number 17. I don't see a penalty. I say uh, I'll do a penalty of a violation of $1,000. Second. Do you have a motion and a second? Do I have any discussion? Seeing none here, none. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Every opposed? Okay, one opposed. Um, it's been a motion has been approved. Thank you. Uh, as to count three, does the board find the respondent in violation of code section 1837 D10 abandonment? The board decided that he that the respondent failed to perform any work on the project for a period in excess of 90 days. Make a motion 
uh, code violation for count three. Scambia County Code Section 18-37 D10, abandonment. With a violation of $1,000. Second. I have a motion to find in fault of count three for a $1,000 fine. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, motion has been approved for count three in fault with a thousand dollar fine. Uh, staff needs a motion in regard to time frame in which these fines need to be paid by the respondent. I'll entertain a motion from someone. And what should happen if it's not met? I apologize. What are options? Um, so. Historically, you, you've said that it needs to come back to the board, um, but you've also said revocation of license, suspension of license, and those items. And it's up to we've the board. Done ninety days. Is that correct, Mr. Uh, historically, that has been what this board has done is ninety days. Okay, so we'll uh, allow ninety days to pay the restitution, we'll pay the fees, uh, fines, and then uh, come back to the board if it hasn't been paid. So we have a motion to. Set up a payment <coughs> schedule of 90 days and come back with the board at the end of that time if it's not been paid for further procedures. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, it is approved for payment time frame of 90 days at the end of that to come back before the board if necessary for any penalty phase. At this time, staff needs um, a recommendation from the board in regard to a recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board. It can include a recommendation for no further action, a fine, suspension, revocation, or restrictions on the registration, or a combination thereof. I would make a motion for no further action at this time. Second. The motion is second for no further action to the CILB. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. It's approved for no further action to the CILB. Um, there was mention of restitution. I believe Mr. Fortner actually supplied a number um, for that amount. I, it is my suggestion that you allow Mr. Cook to also speak to that amount. That, that would have been my suggestion. <laughs> good, good call. We're all on the same page. Mr. Cook. Thank you. Uh, I just want a roof. I, uh, I, I would like for the board to take into consider consideration that I'm sure this roof, new roof is going to cost me considerably more. Uh, I now have a, another roof on top of a roof that I did not request. Uh, I ordered a total re-roof, and that's what the contract stated. I was quoted $96,000 to do that. Uh, I could care less how it's done. I just needed it done. Um, and now here I am. So I would appreciate it if there was some consideration there. I, I, I don't know what it's going to cost me. I haven't checked with anybody else. I really hoped that Mr. Fortner would take care of the um, roof. And that's why I've been so patient and waited so long. But, uh, but now that it's not, I, I do need to figure out what to do next. Uh, Mr. Cook, can I ask you how much have you paid to date? Is it the thirty-nine thousand? Yes, sir. Yeah, we paid the down payment of thirty-nine thousand. It's thirty-nine even. Uh, I, think, I think it was thirty-nine thousand yeah. two hundred, but I'm not exactly positive. And we'll have to look at the cancel check on that. How much? Thirty-nine thousand three twenty. Yeah. And I'm, so I'm sorry, board. You have people that are talking that are not coming to the podium. We don't have their names on the record. We need yeah. to make sure we have that. It's thirty nine thousand three hundred and twenty. Thank you, Miss Christie. Thirty nine thousand three hundred and twenty. That has been paid. Yes, sir. And of course, that perhaps will have to be taken off. It will. Yeah, there's no way around it. That doesn't meet code. Uh, the only thing that does meet code, from what we were told by the engineers for the county, was a TPO roof, which was to go back on it, and that's fine. Uh, that was what we had talked about on November the first. Uh, apparently things have changed and so yeah that's what I'll have to go back with uh, 
at that point. I don't know what foreseeable damage could possibly be underneath it. You know, we have multiple leaks now still. And, right. uh, and so if I can get this clear, that at when you when we started yes, sir. this thing, there was a roof on there that was supposed to be removed and it was not removed. Correct. That's exactly now, what the contract states. Now you have two roofs on correct. to be removed instead of just the one. That is, is correct. That what we're, yes, okay. sir. So the 39 is what you've paid yes, out. Sir. To, so this would bring you back to zero. Correct. And then from there, you would have to find somebody to start all over. To start over. Yes, sir. Does that make sense to everybody on the board? Yes, to would, would we need to have uh, come back for the additional amount? And um, I don't know if it would be appropriate to go ahead and award to be repaid for what he's paid out and then to come back with additional funds as needed. Anybody else? I, I think that's very valid myself. Well, and I still have to deal with the insurance company that he's got to, once that roof is done to make sure that they pay for all the damages inside. So I want to make sure that I get all of that right. taken care of too. That and that, when we do restitution, we give the opportunity to come back if there is necessary for additional. More yes, than likely, we have an insurance expert, but more likely the liability insurance would take care of anything inside. Right, that's, that's my hope. outside yeah, of what absolutely. we deal with here in our in our scope that's different than what we deal with. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Scott? Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Scott, though? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Mr. Fortner? Um, and about the roof, there's 145 squares total of the entire building. 23 of it has already been done and done correctly and I have a drawing of it but it's like the back section is like that over audit like a repair shop or something this part's done and fine 23 squares it's this side that's 108 by 113 that's in question so of needing to be remo talking about removing metal we're not removing metal on everything that I've done the 23 squares in the back is is fine it's the front 122 squares is what has to be redone. So our, my question would be, Mr. Ford, did you remove those 23 squares and replace that, or did you re-roof over that 23 no, squares? No, roof over. And, <coughs> and your contract said that you were supposed to remove it originally? Yes. And you chose and, not to? And we discussed that in, um, it's again, it's a big confusion on a metal roof it's a roof over is what it is. It's not never was decided to be a re-roof. However, I, it was a salesman of mine that will no longer happen again. I will sell every job of mine for the rest of my career. And him and Mr. Cook decided that everything needed to come off down to the metal deck. It's not a metal roof. It's a metal deck. And you can't do that. I mean, I've got a drawing here. You have a block wall here and a block wall here. Metal truss is going up and up, okay, on a one and a half on 12. And then you have a metal deck on top of that. It is not designed to hold, carry water, hold water. It's structural. Never is it designed to have water on that as a roof system. Never, okay? Because he said in the past that was the original roof. No way. It's not. Then you have four inches of foam ISO, that little white prickly mm -hmm. stuff, whatever. All right. Then on top of that is ISO two inches of ISO. Then on top of that is TPO. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you would have to remove all of this to get down to that metal deck and then replace all of that. And that's, that's not, I mean, that's do $300,000. That's not even the question. So like I said, in November, it was a verbal agreement should have been in writing. He has agreed to it in here that he did state that it was okay to do what I was doing a roof over okay over what was there but in his okay was as long as that works and it doesn't leak and now here we are and it's still leaking and it shouldn't have been metal it should have been tpo oh i should have taken the tpo and iso off and went back with either a tpo or a modified system instead of putting metal so to go back to the 23 squares then yes, sir. that metal that's there is the structural metal that it goes is. to the metal rafters it is <clears throat> and metal purlins i've got metal, metal h channel yes gotcha. sir yes sir and so then your tpo and all has been redone in the back 
and there's no flaws, no problems in that area. No, no, that part. That part, that's the section that's in question. No, I'm talking about the 23 that you said is right, okay. The 23 squares is here. That's fine. That's metal with metal over metal with H purlins. That section is fine. 23 squares. It's this flat area here that is connected here. That's 108 feet that way and 113 that way. This is the section here that now this metal has to come off from the top that I installed the R panel. And I have a contract here uh, and a notice of commencement. And <clears throat> I mean, if <clears throat> the balance, this is, this is my option two today, and I'll go ahead and throw it out there. Option two today was I have rewritten my contract and for the balance that was owed, the 58980 um, I have the contract here and the notice of commencement, and that's option two. If Mr. Cook would want to do that, sign this contract, sign this notice of commencement, and as soon as we have a week of 60 degree weather to apply this peel and stick modified, then, and I'll go ahead and get the materials in stock, but then we could move on with the project. So, so that's did, option two. You just said though that with this valley, all that's got to be taken out and everything. So you're saying you would take all that out and redo yes, it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This metal on the front you of this, yes, sir. This, would, this metal would come off down and it's all them. How does, I can I, read. That would be between you and Mr. Cook. We're, that's not that's not what we're doing here today. That between the two of you, okay. if, if y'all chose to go any further, you know, we've we've done the disciplinary. Now we're looking at restitution of what's there. Okay. If we decide restitution, y'all have an agreement. You can come back and tell us, and everybody's happy. But right now we've got to look at the cost factors. But you're telling us the 23 squares in the back was metal, not TPO. I got confused, and I, it's my fault, not yours. The TPO is the main part, but you, I heard you say metal over metal on the 23 squares? On the back, on on this section up here. So yes. you've done a metal re-roof over a metal roof? Yes, yes, sir. And that is That's perfect? Fine. Yeah, not there's leaking. no leaks there, correct? It's fine, That's and there's no leaks. Okay, okay. Can I ask him? Give me 30 seconds, a minute. That, right now, we need to keep moving forward, but that, that that's okay. Anybody else have a question for Mr. Porter from up here? Okay. Then y'all can discuss okay. as you choose to. Um, so we're here. So the restitution, the restitution amount that was supplied was the 39320 From this testimony that was just provided, it sounds like a portion, the complete contract was not the thirty. Nine thousand. It was it was almost a hundred thousand right, dollars. Right. It sounds like he does have a roof system, twenty three squares of roof system, that was installed correctly and is performing correctly. Right. There is still monies owed for the rest of the roof system. Um, I got a question. There was a there was a statement made by uh, the roofer of an amount he was going to willing to give back. Thirty-nine three twenty. Uh, he did state that he was willing to return thirty-nine three twenty and wash his hands completely of this whole job. Now he's now said, "Hey, we can revise this contract, and I will get this done for you." Um, he's given two options here. I guess it's up to Mr. Cook on which way he would like to proceed. Uh, keep in mind, there was a portion of this project that was done correctly. But he said to. The thirty-nine. That, that is what Mr. Cook stated earlier. Okay. No. Mr. Fortner stated earlier. Sorry. <laughs> so what was the outcome of the discussion? Mr. Cook, if you could come to the podium. Uh, listen, this is this is what we discussed November first. This is the same amount of money that I was going to be paying to get my roof. Once the roof is finished, once he finishes this, uh, I'll be able to file with the insurance company and get my money and it'll be done. So I have no problem. I need a roofer. He's a roofer. Uh, and uh, I have no problem with this, with doing this. Uh, this is can what we, I expected to be done can we make a November motion 1. To, so. sorry. Can we make a motion to move to the restitution hearing and at that time? If they've settled this, then we can. Uh, so, if, no if Mr. Cook is agreeing to continue on with this contract, the restitution would not come into play. 
Yeah, so we know um, just have he does have the ability, should this con this new revised contract go south, to bring this matter back to the board to be addressed at a later date. That's always an option available to any citizen. Okay. And if, if, if it does come back, bring what additional cost would be if you give an estimate for that, if it's not rectified. Yes, sir. Thanks. So at this time, the board has made a determination not to include any restitution. At this time, the board has made a determination to not include any <laughs> further restitution. And there is an opportunity to come back by does, the complainant. Does that need to be a motion? Uh, no, okay. uh, you would only need a motion if you were ordering, if you're ordering something. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it'll all work out for both of you, you know? That's what we, truly what we like to see up here is it work. You know, versus all the, because nobody's made whole at the end. It don't matter. So hopefully it'll work good. All right. That's the last story. I actually have um, just a mention to the board. Uh, the board is well aware that we have two vacancies on this board. It does make a, a kind of hard to get a quorum sometimes. Uh, you see today we almost did not have one, had one more member not been able to make it. Um, we did receive some resumes for the layperson position. I am working on getting a recommendation to the BCC to appoint one of those um, applicants. Um, we have advertised for a division to contractor for this board um, I know of two I want to say it's been three times but I know for certain it has been two times we need a division to, to contractor on this board so I would like to maybe ask the board to reach out to some of your uh, fellow contractors that you come in contact with <laughs> I know you're laughing mr. Brian I know somebody you everybody's don't like just is that wanting to serve <laughs> but we do need that position on this board I am going to have to advertise this again in an effort to obtain a board member and so I'm asking for, for your help from the construction industry is that what we're looking for we it has to be a person from the construction industry that holds a division two license and meaning a roofer a plumber HVAC um, not electrical because electrical has their own board right. but it has to be a divi division two contractor we can secure that for you this okay. would be to fill the position that was uh, left vacated by uh, Larry Downs so you know how long it's been since he sat on this yeah. board that is how long we have been attempting to fill that role we will put due diligence to that can I make a motion to adjourn yet yes so moved. Do I have a second to adjourn? <laughs> it's like a by standing up. Yeah, that's right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Meet adjourn. <laughs>